say good afternoon to Mr John Virgo and Clive Everton. Thank you, Hazel. Good afternoon, everyone. This week's headlines have been dominated by suspicions of match fixing. There's also been a Ronnie O'Sullivan implosion. But the final brings together two of the circuit's most clean-cut characters. Fine ambassadors for snooker's best values. Top-notch skill. Ladies and gentlemen, the first frame, Marco Futebeck. And impeccable manners within a highly competitive context. With the break off shot, the idea is always to leave the cue ball tight to the ball cushion. Fou could have done with leaving it a bit closer to it there. And that's why. One. Yeah, just what you're looking for. First pot, good one. That's the type of pot he'd been practicing on the practice table this morning before he came out. Very interesting matchup this for me. Very hard to call a winner. Three. Sean played excellent last evening to finish off Stephen Maguire. Four. Marco Fu's performance in the semi-final against Ali Carter was just as good. Who's going to get the better today? In contrast to last season when he reached four Eleven. semis and one final in seven attempts at uh, ranking tournaments. Sean Murphy failed to win a match in the season's first four ranking events, but his performances this week have illustrated the axiom that uh, while form may be temporary, class is permanent. Well. Nicely judged Cannon. <coughs> Murphy has eaten, slept and breathed snooker ever since he was uh, 11 years of age, at the age of 13. He was given uh, a £5,000 a year do. sponsorship by Max Griggs, who was chairman of the shoe company, Doc Martins, which was located in what was then Murphy's hometown, Earthling Borough. Max Griggs wanted to encourage local talent. Nineteen. I'm not quite certain if there's a, a red apart from the two obvious ones in the open. Will he play into the cluster here with pace? Well, that was the idea, but just didn't get into them. 26. Just watch the cue ball here at Arc, but just too late. He needed to catch the red he made contact with, half ball. Any thick contact uh, off the bunch is going to spray the reds and could easily leave a long pot. It turned out 
And he could just 26. get through to the one at the back, <laughs> from which he played a shot to nothing. Attempted the pot, but with safety also in mind, if it didn't go in. Terrific pot from Marco. From the spectators' point of view, good sign. Both players look to be queuing well. And a full house, and we've had great support here this week in Telford. Well, I'm not quite certain what Marco was attempting to do there. Eight. No, he didn't have the best angle on the black, but he made a better effort of stunning and carrying the pink and possibly losing a few reds, but didn't. Michael Fu, eight. <coughs> Marco Fu from Hong Kong, educated in Vancouver. And over here this week, with his girlfriend Shirley, who has a master's degree in supply chain logistics. One. <laughs> Nicely picked out. Again. Three. He took care to get the cue ball behind the balk line in case the red didn't go in. Sean Murphy won. <laughs> Not certain the one cushion escape. It's not very difficult to tell how far or how close he is to the green. Come down the left hand side, but we've seen so many players just slide past the reds. That's one way to go. But as I say, we've seen so many times this week, players have just misjudged the, the cushion. It hasn't slid as much as they, they thought. Looking down the other side, so he's going to come off two cushions. You've got to be careful here. Unless he's just playing for the red near the top cushion, but that's a bit dangerous. You can always knock this on. But a good speed and a good direction. <laughs> that was an excellent shot. Difficult to get the cue ball to potentially the most damaging area behind brown and green. <laughs> Nevertheless, that was still a decent shot. Yes, bit of a problem here for Marco. There's no escape down the left-hand side of the table as we look, and looking down the right-hand side, he's got to catch that red on the right-hand side of the table really well if he's going to try and get back to the balk end. And this time, of course, because he's near the balk cushion, not that easy to just drop off one cushion and rest into either the bunch of reds or that Red near the top cushion. It's the one cushion into the main cluster of reds in the middle of the table. Well, 
Well played. Impeccable judgment of pace. Can get behind Green and Brown this time. Well, that's a poor shot. That really is a poor shot. As you say, Clive, there was a chance to get behind the Green and Brown, and I think he should have attempted that. OK, he might not have left an easy pot. I think there is one, possibly, to the right corner. This one here. And hand on the table. You think it's going to be close. <laughs> Terrific pot, but how is Sean could leave him even a sniff at that? You wouldn't know, but a terrific pot from Marco. Highly debatable shot choice by Murphy. He's got a million dollar cue action, but uh, sometimes uh, he makes a surprising shot selection. Oh, well, he could only have missed that because he was overstretching. Well, absolutely. Didn't want to get the rest, didn't feel as though he could get the backspin and the cue power he needed if using the rest, but overstretching like that. <clears throat> and also concerned about that red that was near his body, so he didn't really get in the line. Sean Murphy's having a look at a three ball plant here. Is it on? nearly was but now it hasn't gone in what a chance for Marco Fu well he must have noticed that a little earlier and maybe that's why he didn't play his previous safety down the right hand side of the table afraid of leaving it for Fu one but it turned out it wasn't quite on <laughs> Nine. Hmm, a strange choice of shot that. Can't disturb that little cluster of four, although I think as he pots one, he'll clear the path for another, but I thought he'd have been a little bit better on the pink than this. And because he wasn't good on the pink, he's now not good on the next red. 15. Careless. Well, his previous positional shot didn't give him a chance to get over the left-hand side of the table. He couldn't get on the bottom red in the cluster from the potting angle that he had on the pink. Didn't play a good positional shot for the red on the right side cushion. If this was straighter to the far corner, 
you would think that uh, he would pot it, but that's uh, under half ball, it seems. Good pot, but didn't fully commit for position on the colour. Since the pot was too difficult to concentrate on nothing else. So this is a tough blue. No, he's missed the blue. Did he get on the colour? The answer is no. <coughs> Was this a clean contact? It was not. Yeah, but I think you're going to see that all the time, Clive, when players play with a bit of power. The cue ball leaves the bed of the table and has that sort of slight bouncing effect. This time aiming for that target behind green and brown. A snooker here would be very handy. That's a bit too hard. Not a bad length, but he's not got the snooker. Fu can see the danger here. He clips off the outside red. He could knock another red towards the right corner. Well, you called it, Clive. And it looked the obvious line for the red. Obviously, I can only assume he's played to hit it a little bit thicker and send the red away from the pocket but getting so close to the jaws it stayed there good chance now this for sean murphy to take this opening frame one all the great players have always set great store by winning the first frame of any match steve davis was a master at it and as our old Late great colleague John Pullman used to say, if you win the Six. first frame, your opponent's got to win two to get back in front. Simple math, but true. Seven. Fourteen. Murphy will need the more difficult of the two remaining reds to clinch the frame at this visit. Twenty. What will make it easier with that awkward last red? You only need the red. Twenty-one. <laughs> Well, a little bit straighter on the black would have been preferable, but he can still hold for this red. Well, he's probably left a little bit more angle than he would have liked. As I say, only the red needed, but it's a little bit trickier than it had been straight behind it. But no problem. Marco Fu made the safety mistake. It looked a good opportunity for Sean Murphy to take the first frame, and he has done. 36. Sean Murphy, 36. Well, Fu comes out of his chair, but uh, it's a lost cause, surely. 
38 behind, with only 27 on the table. Two. Although he would have noted that uh, there's a gilt edge chance to lay a snooker from green behind brown. Yes, three snookers, three four point snookers required. But as you say, Clive, he knew he was guaranteed the first one. But they've got to be very difficult at this level to force your opponent to miss them. And coming off one cushion, you wouldn't expect Sean to miss this. Foul. Mark of food, four. No, you wouldn't. But he has. Fu still needs two more snookers, though. Yeah, and just to remind you, no miss can be called when we're in the snookers required stage of a frame. This green might have ended, probably would have ended Fu's interest in the frame. He's got another snooker though, which would be even more promising if uh, the green was closer up to the blue. Yes, and he's got to be a little bit careful here, Sean, that he doesn't play this too hard and miss the green and leave a free ball. He missed a similar type of shot, just coming off the one cushion and just slipped past the, the green. Doesn't want to do that again. Where's the cue ball going? Oh. Well, would you believe it? Mark of food four. Would you believe it? So Fu has secured two of the three four-point penalties that he needed. Well, you know the green's going to stay in. Well, he's going down the other side. Same difference. You know the green's going to stay in the middle of the table because it'll stay there with the blue, trying to get behind the black. It's all about the line, and it's all about the length. He's got the snooker. And this is a little bit more difficult because the obvious one cushion on the right-hand side of the table is cut off by the black. So what looked to be a comfortable first frame for Sean Murphy is becoming... A little bit of a scary one. If he misses this, Marco Fu can win the frame. A lot of players wouldn't even have come out of their chair needing three snookers. But Fu will be right back in it if Murphy doesn't escape here. Yeah, as you say, and I, and I think a lot of players missed that opportunity, but he saw the yellow over the pocket. He knew if he potted the yellow and got reasonable, the first snooker was a, a certainty. Ooh, he just... <laughs> If he'd failed to make his escape, I would have started to uh, recall Mike Hallett winning the deciding frame against John Parrott in a Masters semi-final from 43 behind with only 25 on. We haven't quite 
come to that yet, but that's another snooker. And a terrific snooker. And with that green being so close to the blue, this is not certain to hit. In the most obvious way is the two cushion escape. The problem is, if you miss it, it's certain to leave a free ball, you would have thought. But the, that's the most obvious way to go. The, the problem is, though, if you play it slow and hit it, then you're just leaving your opponent with an easy opportunity to snook here again. So it's decision time now for Sean. How quickly a frame can turn. There would also be a turn in the psychological balance of the match, as early as it is, because with his opponent needing three, three snookers, Murphy would have assumed he was going to go 1-0 up. It'll be a body blow if he goes 1-0 down. Important hit. Well, and he nearly potted the green. I think he'd have had eyes for the blue because the blue was going very close to the middle pocket as well. It was a good hit. For Fu, the trouble is he's pretty well got to pot the green here, which would reduce the number of potential snookering balls. First to ten wins uh, the first prize of £100,000. All week it's been first to nine. There's the trophy they're playing for. Well, it doesn't appear at first look to have left himself in the ideal position to try and get a snooker on the brown. And obviously, you'd be trying to get foul. that foul. <laughs> Mark for three. Sean Murphy said. Well, what a twist in the tail. Foo fouls the black with his waistcoat. Let's have a look. Well, the referee's closer than anyone. Marco can't believe it. But it certainly looked as though he touched the black and what little chance he had in this frame, you feel, is now gone. He's back to needing three snookers. A fascinating and in the end bizarre conclusion to this frame. Four and the first frame, Sean Murphy. It's taken 28 minutes and Sean Murphy leads Marco Fu by a frame to nil. John? Yeah, the one thing there that looked absolutely horrible for a moment, and he must have been dying a thousand deaths, was when he looked like he was going to get, you know, Marco was going to get the three snookers. Mm. Don't want to start a final like that with a frame, you know, where you should have won, and you could have thrown it away. Well, I think uh, the temperature of this uh, of this final has been set simply because Sean Murphy knows he's going to have to fight for absolutely everything with Marco Fu. Fu, winner of the Grand Prix in Aberdeen 14 months ago, beating Ronnie O'Sullivan in the final.
weak safety shot there from Marco. Caught the intended red for the safety, much too thick. And there's a possible pot on here to the right corner. I think he can get round the back of the black. Well, he's not playing the pot, so it doesn't feel as though he, he can get back to Bork and play the shot for nothing. Good shot, though. Good length. Knew that the potting angle was also guiding the cue ball through the other reds. Or something near the potting angle. Oh, well, it wasn't a bad nudge off the brown to leave that cue ball near the bark cushion. And he's made the yellow and brown a bit of a target now for somebody with a good safety. Red will cut to the left corner, but far too dangerous. And if you take it on, you're going to be careering into other reds. You've no idea whether you're going to be on a colour where the cue ball will finish. And you wouldn't want to miss the pot, but I think he's taking it on. This is risky. Well, you lucky boy. How on earth did he find a gap like that? Murphy extended his hand to acknowledge how lucky he was there. <laughs> Brown and yellow forming a, a wall for most reds. Three balls widths wide. Yes, yeah, so at first look, he's not left this red. He just can't <coughs> get enough of it. I mean, he may be able to drift a little bit with a trace aside. I'm sure if he could get through to it clean, he'd go for this. He not have to do much with the cue ball to finish on the black. And gets the potting angle. That was the no wrist shot. <laughs> we we'll have to say at the moment, Michael Fu is having the better of this safety exchange. Well, here's the waistcoat incident from the last frame, and it just touches the black. The waistcoat bulging out a little. Maybe he should consult his tailor. trying to get behind brown and yellow and succeeding it's not an obvious escape this i mean 
The reds you'd like to be making contact with are the three reds near the top cushion, but if he tries to go twice across, I think the blue comes into play. There's a cluster of reds on the left-hand side of the table as we look, but if he rolls into them, he's not certain to leave it safe. He's got a problem here, as Marco. <coughs> Some shots do require extensive study. Foul. And a miss. Sean Murphy. Foul. Would have been all right had he got the line right. The length was okay. Well, the length was okay. Direction slightly out. I was saying he could go twice across, but as you see, we, we've drawn the line and he's going right across the blue spot, which obviously is no good. That's why he's coming down this side of the table. Again, and a miss. seemed to straighten up Show off me. the second cushion. Now, as I say, it wasn't an easy escape, this. And playing into this cluster here, he can quite easily leave one. He can have as many times as he like, of course, because he's snookered on all reds. Once he get closer to that middle pocket, well, he couldn't hit it much better than that. Well, he's going to have to put Foul. a trace aside on this. He's going to have to put a little bit of left-hand side just to widen it off the second cushion. Because at the moment, when it comes off that second cushion, I don't know whether it's straightening up or he thinks it's straightening up, but he needs a little bit of left-hand side here to widen the angle. Well, it's playing ball again. And this time just flicked in, and I can only assume that was always his intention. Now has he left anything? I'd suggest not. If he had it done, Sean would have been down playing it by now. There is a red there that's free, but it just won't go into this corner pocket. OK, but hasn't got quite behind yellow and brown this time. Length reply. This safety jewel has been going eleven and a half minutes. Yes, and because of that good length that Marco got with the cue ball, any return to balk is very, very dangerous. There's so many other reds to avoid to get that path. I think Sean's just looking if he could roll to this red near the right corner pocket, but the way you'd like to play this is come off the right-hand side cushion first, but there's a red in the way, so he can't do that. He doesn't catch this quite right. He could go in off. Well, he's trying to rattle it in the jaws. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well... I could see the idea. 
Just at the uh, left hand jaw as we look, then the right hand jaw and run a, along the top. That's what he was trying to do. And whether it turned or not, I don't know, but instead of going into the jaws, it went into the pocket. What's he trying this time? Same shot. Same shot. This looks a bit better. Well played. Perfect. Yeah, when they say don't try that at home, on some of the snooker tables I used to play on, I think you'd have finished up in the pocket every time. But no, it was a very well worked out shot and confirms what uh, the guys in the studio were saying and what we've been saying all week, that he's gaining with the experience and I think a few years ago there he may have tried the difficult return to Bork, but looking for a simple solution. And sometimes there is one, as he found there. <coughs> well, that was a mistake, and he's been very fortunate, because I think if he hadn't have left Sean hampered by the green, there's a possibility this red could cut into the right corner. Even the safety shot would have been easier. In contact uh, on the way back, rather than direct, was intentional. One. A safety exchange of 14 minutes, 40 seconds, ends with a fluke. And we say it so many times, don't we? There's so much skill and the, the way the players work hard to try and create an opening. And then a fluke like that just turns the frame completely on its head. Five. It's not just the fluke, but what flows from it. In tennis, one lucky shot earns you one point. In snooker, it could be the key shot in the frame. Although always, the player has still got to exploit his good fortune. Six. Well, it's not a bad situation it, to make a, a reasonable break from. It'd be a lot better if you would get the black on the spot sooner rather than later. Huge amount of Ranking points uh, at stake in the UK Championship. 11. Only the World Championship itself has a higher tariff. Twelve. Win or lose, Fu is certain to rise to a provisional fourth. Won't be happy with that shot. Got into the cue ball far too much. You may have to trust to a little bit of luck now with position. And potting this blue just run into reds, it could go wrong. It's not gone very nice. 17, it's touching ball, Michael. 
but because he'd always screwed on the blue, he felt there was no other shot to play at the worst possible outcome. Okay, he possibly can still pot this red to either far right corner or right middle. He's been declared a touching ball by Jan Verhaas, so it's an easy return to the ball, Ken, but as he's playing it, he'll be thinking, what an opportunity I've let go there. Like a foo, 70. Murphy started the season third in the rankings, fell to a provisional sixth with four first round exits and uh, he's going to go back up again to third. Nice path, good shot. Yeah, an excellent shot. And it could be a telling safety shot, that. There may be a pot on, and Sean may be forced into playing it. I can't see an easy safety. Not unless there's a gap between yellow and blue for a red near the top cushion. Which I don't think there is. And he's eyeing up the pot. This one to the right corner. It's one of those, if you go for it, you need to get it. A lot of pressure on that. He got nowhere near it. Some 300,000 people, I learnt the other day, still watch snooker in black and white. To those folks, I say, this is a brown that Fu is going for. Not another red. Peter Ebden, who is colour blind, mistook uh, brown for red 11. in the Grand Prix in Glasgow a couple of months ago. Probably hear 12. a little bit of a rattling in the, the rafters. It's very windy here today in Telford. We had this problem the other day. That cue ball needs to run. It needs to run. 15. He may not be on this red. Oh, 
Well, that's a poor shot. Two good chances he's had now in this frame and not made the most of either of them. No, he can't. He can just about hit the red, but not enough to pot it. Big mistake. And that's another. Like a foot. 15. It's amazing, Clive, how many times we see him. You know, you can't tell with Marco, but he must have been so disappointed that he wasn't on the red that he didn't give that full concentration and compounded one mistake with another. Snooker, like most ball games, because a lot to do with it is the technique. Seven. You cannot relax for a moment. You cannot lose that concentration. Easy pots are missed. Comfortable safety shots Eight. are not played as they should have been in that case with Marco. It really is a test of a player's full concentration. And he was found lacking there. Thirteen. Fourteen. Oh, out of position. Well, there you go. There's another example. You just put a trace of right hand side on whether it was intentional or right. not. If it had had no side, it'd have finished up Number on a board colour. Fourteen. <laughs> and you'd be surprised if that would be the most productive snooker. But just watch the cue ball. If it keeps on that line, fine. It's right hand side, nestles behind the brown. As I say, it was doubtful that that snooker was going to cause Marco any problem, and there was no real red to leave. So both players have had chances and not made the most of them here. Rather an edgy start to the match. Foo's had two good chances in this frame. The first from a fluke. Murphy didn't look like winning the frame at that visit. That would have uh, depended on whether he would have been able to open the cluster on the black cushion but uh, he should have scored a few more before that issue came up. Hit the two reds just for good measure. measure. Two for a cannon. <laughs> Is he looking at the pot here? I think he is, you know. Knew he'd be on the black if it went in, but didn't get near the jaws. Shouldn't cause a problem. Although sometimes the way these cushions are sliding, but get as close to that middle pocket as you can. Well played.
The key to Murphy's 9-4 win in yesterday's semi-final against Stephen Maguire was uh, winning the afternoon session 6-2, which was pretty mediocre on the whole. But uh, the mediocre frames count just as much as the good ones. And uh, one, notwithstanding that fine long pot, this second frame hasn't been of uh, notably high standard so far. Mm. Well, he's OK, but he tried to cannon into those three reds that are near the top Six. cushion. So he needs a good angle on the blue to try that again. He wanted to bring those, well, at least those two reds into play. A bit fortunate to have this one. Mm, that doesn't look good. He's going to nestle on the blue, is he? Mm. No end in sight yet in this frame. And if he plays the pink, he'll only be going for the six extra points. Murphy couldn't have had more space around the blue. Instead, he finishes in the worst possible position. From such an easy red, to finish there was poor. Blue. Sean Murphy, seven. Forced into playing a safety. But uh, not too damaging a, a safety by the look of it. Caught the red too thin. The green's going to help Sean Murphy though. Just where he'd like to put his hand, bridging down this length of the table. This is a tough pot if he takes it on. Difficult shot that. But it looks as though it's run safe. Frame passes the half hour mark. As all three of the initial frames in Murphy's semi final against Stephen Maguire did yesterday. Yeah, it was a nice contact, nice kiss on the green. That's the line he'll be looking for. Hit the middle one of the three on the top cushion. Wide. You'd be disappointed there. That was quite a reasonable target to be aiming at. The three reds there three. on the top cushion. Be disappointed to miss them. Just needed to get that cue ball a little bit closer to the middle pocket. As I say, you would expect him to have got the cannon there. Sean Murphy, three. So the points are level. Now Marco Fu would love this frame to level the match. He's going to have to work quite hard here. These reds are not ideally situated for either player. Good shot to make such a wafer-thin contact, shifting the red as little as possible. <laughs> 
Neither player has hit his stride yet. The match is an hour old. The highest breaks are 36 Murphy, his clinching effort in the opening frame. 17 Fu. Yes, Marco started off slowly in his semi-final match with Ali Carter, didn't he? He was, was always behind and looked as though he was possibly going to be 6-2 behind after the first eight frames, but managed to claw it back to 5-3. And then, of course, I always remember Clive last season, and I don't think we made enough of it, really, when he was trailing Ronnie O'Sullivan in the Grand Prix final, 6-2. So another slow start. And then won every frame they played in the evening to run out a winner against the great Ronnie. So I think in the early stages of a match, from Sean Murphy's point of view, you want to make hay while the sun shines. Maybe Foo's like a bat, he only flies at night. Well, he just seems to get stronger as the match goes on. As I say, that performance last year when he beat Ronnie was just top draw. Nice long pot from Sean, he's knocked in some nice balls. He'd like that to stop so he's on the blue. He'd prefer the blue to the yellow. Long pot success hasn't really settled down. I thought Sean would have been a little bit better than Marco, but not according to those stats. Bit early to tell, though. Turning the second frame. That's a pretty good effort to get on this red near the top cushion. But Three. Well, would you want to risk taking this on? This is tough. But he did have uh, the yeah. angle that he could run the cue ball away to Bork as he attempted it. Well, yes, all the reasons that took a little bit of pressure off the pot, but you won't see many better pots than that in this final. Didn't play the pot Sean on the Murphy, black. Four. A little ooh from the crowd, but he played the snooker. Sean may take this red on, you know. As long as you get close, and it's a type of shot you don't want to hit it too hard, and if, if it doesn't go in, it should rattle the jaws and run along the bolt cushion, and of course, if it goes in, it'd be on the green, and a chance to win the frame. It's worth a go. Could prove the key shot to this second frame. Yes, just one more good shot, isn't there? This green probably a little bit thinner than he would have liked, and he's just got to be careful here with that blue being in close proximity to the yellow. But if this shot goes right, if he pots this green, gets nicely on the yellow, you couldn't see him not winning this second frame. The green's in. How's the cue ball? How is the cue ball? It's too hard. 
Well, if it's touching ball, what a result Four. that is. It's touching ball. Well, it's a good second prize for Murphy. Just looking at last shot, you know, there of Sean's. Less than quarter ball green and hitting a cushion immediately. It's almost impossible to stop it short of the ball line, it seems to me. Anyway, as I say, it was a Sean Murphy fortunate ball. thing that he got left a touching ball because it was a certain snooker. Yeah, we'll just have a look at this. I mean, just drop the green in, but that cue ball never looked like stopping short of the yellow. Bound to be a free ball. Foul. And a miss. A free ball. Sean Murphy. <laughs> Mm, miss call decision. I personally, I'd have it replaced. There's no easy pot to go at, and I don't see how he can get a better snooker than he had. Back. And of course, the problem for Marco Fu is the old problem. It's not hitting the yellow. When he hits it, can he leave it safe? He needs to. Just look from Fu. Can Murphy get through to the potting angle of the yellow? Yes, he can. So he comes to the table, 12 points clear. It's a little bit thinner than you would like to control for the green, but the most important thing here is pot the yellow and get that cue ball in and out of balk. Well, he's missed that by a long way. Grossly overcut. This is not easy with uh, rest and extension, though, particularly to screw back for green. Perfect, but quite good. Two. Yes. I, th I think the difficulty of the pot just edged him on the side of making certain of the pots, and anywhere on the green will do. And it goes, but it's not a good cue ball, this. Five. So close to the cushion. He needs the brown, the blue, and the pink. Nine. Good queuing from there. This to level the match after 70 minutes play. Twenty and frame. First frame to Murphy Wonderful. after 28 minutes, second frame to Fu after 41. It's one all. Well, it's one all. Murphy could have been two nil. And it's at times like this you think, I wonder whether when we look back at the end of this final, these are decisions that you might regret. You never know. Into frame three we go. 
So the slow start to today's proceedings, mirroring the slow start to yesterday's the first three frames between uh, Sean Murphy and Stephen Maguire. To an hour and 40 minutes, more than half an hour a frame. But the evening session was very good. So was that long puff. Well, I said a potter in the red in the last frame was, you won't see any better in this final. I don't know, I think that just surpassed it. <coughs> just having a look here, that's, it's that red just above the black. And he's just wondering if after this blue he pots a red and then a black. Where will the black be going? Will it be able to go on its spot? There's no other spots available. Seven. He's playing for the black. He may just have a slight angle in potting the black. He can just nudge the red towards the same pocket as the black. I think that's what he played, but he, he's missed that little cannon. Does this red 14. go now? Well, just about, but he wanted to be straighter on the red. Fifteen. Well, he's potted the red, he's not quite recovered the situation just yet. Twenty-three. We'll be going into them here. I don't think you can get right into the heart of that cluster. Those two reds on the left-hand side of it. Just nudging. I won't play this with too much pace. That way he was always going to be on the red to the left middle and couldn't have played that better. Good shot. 30. Thirty-six. Already the highest break of the match after two tactically dominated opening frames. Forty-four. Forty-five. Still got two reds available here, so he doesn't have to go in the cluster. And he's played for one of those two reds, the right middle. Fifty-two. Fifty-three. Nice angle on the blue. I think he'll play the cannon this time. Unless he's just looking to see if there's a red will go into the the right corner. If it does, well, it just maybe does. I mean, this could change his decision. 
play the green and then play for the loose red on the left hand side of the table. So red colour, well two <coughs> reds, two colours, and that red will go into this corner and possibly could play for it to the left middle. He's nicely on this red to play for the black. Fifty-seven. Well, for some reason, decided for the blue. Why? I wouldn't have a, a clue why he went up for the blue there. I'm sure he's decided this red goes, so why not play for the black? Anyway, it might not make any difference. He's on this red, but surely it'd have been easier to get on it 62. off the black. But anyway, this red then a reasonable size colour for the frame. Pink will 63. do. This pink will put him 69 mm. points in front with only 67 remaining. And you sometimes think, Clive, but you know, we say, oh, a shot deserves to win a, a frame. Well, that opening red from Sean Murphy was just superb. <laughs> and it looks as though it has won in the frame now. This was it. Long distance, 69. forcing through off two cushions. He's been at the table ever since. 70. So after two slow but nevertheless engrossing frames. 76. The pace of the match has picked up. 77. Murphy securing. The third frame with a single scoring visit. 84. <coughs> 85. Murphy, one of 23 players who have compiled uh, a century of centuries in competition. 92. This looks like being number 129, but only his fourth of the season. 99. Mind you, when you get knocked out in the first round of every tournament, <laughs> it doesn't give you a lot of room, does it, to make centuries? Well, he hasn't made one there, but uh, 99 was just as good. It gives him the third frame and a 2-1 lead. <coughs> Last frame before the mid-session interval. Good break off shot from Murphy. It's forced Fu to think about his reply. Most players break off from the yellow side, but it's basically the same shot, but uh, with left of centre striking from the green side. In both cases, the idea is to get the cue ball on the ball cushion behind either green or yellow. Marco giving this lots of thoughts. You can't blame him really because that opening red from Sean Murphy in the last frame which eventually turned into a frame winning contribution was absolutely top class so 
That puts your opponent under a little bit of pressure, but that's exactly what he played, and a good shot it was. Foos containing safety has put a red uh, in the balk area, so uh, there won't be any yep. clips away to balk. With that red uh, remaining there. Do you know what I was going to say, and I'm not after time, mm. I was going to say, the one thing he's got to be careful of here, he doesn't leave this red over the middle pocket, because it's hard to get the pace into the ball when you're just striking down with the spider. But careless it was. One. One. The cue ball was uh, tight to one of the jaws of the middle pocket, but uh, at that speed, no one here would have expected Fu to miss it. Yeah, but once again, we see the problems when you're tight under the cushion and nothing he could do with the cue ball, just roll it across the nap. There's not a lot of nap on these tables, but when you roll in it slowly, it can just deviate a fraction, as that did. A shot almost exactly like that changed the course of snooker history. Rex Williams had it in the semi-final of the 1972 World Championship. Had he potted one of those in what could have been the clinching frame, he would have beaten Alex Higgins in the semi-final instead of losing 31-30. And Higgins going on to win the title and change snooker history. Yeah, the core Paul Nine. Bolton. I was there, Clive, and I saw every frame. I was in Alex's corner, of course. There's a lovely story about that, you know, and that particular match where, I mean, nowadays 16. all the players have a wet and dry towel as we watch this cannon, which could have worked out a little bit better. All the players have a wet and dry towel. But them days, if you wanted a towel, you had to bring your own. And uh, Rex Williams had brought one, Alex hadn't, and Alex started using Rex's towel, wiping his face, and uh, Rex said, I don't mind using my towel, he said, but I've got a little bit of dermatitis, he said, in my hands. <laughs> Alex never used it again. The previous shot went wrong, but uh, that was a good pot to keep the break going. It looks as if he can cue it with his normal bridge at his normal angle. He didn't need the elevated so bridge, 17. but it was still difficult enough to miss. Yes, we always say about those shots, that <coughs> they look as though they're over the, the pocket, really, don't they? But it's an acute angle, and if you just catch the near jaw, they're not going to go in. So a let-off for Marco. One. 
six. Seven. Fourteen. Fifteen. Murphy found his break-making touch uh, in the last two frames. 22. The run of 99 after the first two frames had been pretty slow. 70 minutes between them. Fu perhaps uh, may be doing so here. Twenty-three. Bit of a wriggler. Yes, used all the pocket there, didn't he? Then it went, and nicely on the pink. A frame-winning chance for sure. <coughs> Twenty-nine. Well the towel comes into operation. Thirty. Any sweat uh, on the hands, particularly the bridge hand, is bad because uh, it impedes uh, the smooth back and forward motion of the cue. Bridge needs to be perfectly dry. Thirty-seven. Not quite on the red as he would have liked to have been here. He's just gone away from the black. Not that he can hold for the pink. May still up for the blue. That's what he's done. But he's overrun it slightly, and that's the problem. It's not as bad as it could have been, could have caused it to red in the ball, Ken, but once you start running up the table and losing that good angle on the blue, problems arise. Forty-one. Now this could be the key to this frame. It's not difficult. You just got to adjust the pace correctly. It's okay. Forty five. Twenty nine points the lead. <coughs> but I think once again he may have to go back up for the blue or is he trying for the pink in the same pocket? Forty six. He could just about get on the black. I wouldn't say that's exactly where he wanted to be. He's just lost that absolute pinpoint position at the moment.
may have needed just a trace <coughs> of left of centre striking to avoid cannoning that red. Yes, I think he did, and he played it well. So it should be a formality now, just a red and a colour needed. Fifty-four. So as close as I expected it at the start of the match. Both players have had chances, played some good snooker. Probably Sean Murphy has played the better. <laughs> but there's a long way to go. Mid-session into the left of this frame. Sixty-one. So both players have got frames on the scoreboard and settled into the match. And this could 62. be a classic. Very hard to choose between both players and both at the top of the form. And I'm sure they'll show that as this match goes on. 2 kg frames were split one each. 69. Murphy made a 99 break to go 2-1 up. 70. This effort Brings Fu level. Yes, well, Sean Murphy just missed out on the century. Every chance now for Marco 75. to better that 99 break of Sean's. 77. As long as you've got 73 or more coming to the colours, there's 100 on. 80. In his 11-year professional career, Fu has made 162 centuries. A pretty high strike rate. 89. Shows how strong he is in the break-making department. 95. Fu's eighth century of the tournament, 102, leaves the match level at 2 all at the mid-session interval. I haven't mentioned it since about half past 11 this morning, but thanks for reminding me again. It was a missable hazel, to be perfectly honest. I think you would have potted that. Hazel, you should have heard what he said in the players' lounge. It was full, and when you showed that... It's unrepeatable. <laughs> I didn't swear, it was just a bold something, wasn't it? Uh, but there again, Steve Davis needs the money. I lost mine. But this match building up very nicely. Slow start, two awkward frames, but the last two frames have been superb. Long way off that. Is he going to be lucky? Think of the two players. Marco Fu will be far more pleased than Sean Murphy. Uh, on reflection of the opening four frames, we see Sean missing this shot. I think Sean should have certainly won three of them, if not all four. I know Marco made 100 in the last game, but it was only when Sean missed an easy blue in the middle. Um, Marco had had his cup of tea and enjoyed it. I don't think Sean would. Did expect him to knock that one in. So always a bit difficult when you're close to the object ball, just to see the line of the ball and the pocket. He's going to have to swing this around the bunch to try and get up for the blue or one of the ball colours. One. shouldn't be a problem with the brown, although when you force these, if you don't catch them correctly, you can wobble them in the jaws of the pocket. <coughs> now, there might be one red at the back of the bunch that's available into Five. the left corner. <coughs> and we can play around on the blue off this. There you see it. 
And now you don't. Six. Because the blacks had a commission, pink had a commission as well. There was a chance here to play blue into pink. It's a little bit thin for that. So they might decide to play the, the green. The blue's the more attacking shot. Just play the slow cannon into the pink, but it doesn't like that. It's too thin. Jan Verhask asking the, some of the people just to turn the earpieces down a little bit. They can sometimes hear the commentary through the earpiece. Might help sometimes. <laughs> Nine. Ten. A couple of loose le reds, as you can see, but may go straight into the pink here, full ball. Well, half ball. And that's the reason the white has. 15. Round to the cushion. There's a chance of a shot to nothing. The red in Bork. If he plays the red into the Bork pocket and leaves the white on the jaws of the middle pocket, he won't be leaving anything on. It doesn't look like he wants to play that. It's just off straight. He can leave the white right near the jaws of the middle pocket. Beyond the blue should it go in. But he'd be worried about leaving the red he's going for. Just see how straight this red is into the green pocket. See whether it's maybe not. He can't really get near the middle pocket, so that's why he's looking at the safety. He looked at the two reds to see if there were a plant to the middle, the two to the right there. And they're not far away. Sixteen. Well, bad luck when he went into the pack from the blue. A good luck to see a plant pop up. It's not a good chance just yet because of the situation of the pink and black. The reds are nicely open. Playing for the black, as you can see. Oh, well, that's Sean Murphy. a bad 21. miss. He's missing far too many at the moment, Dennis, to be honest, in this match. Luckily for Sean, uh, Marco Fu didn't really play until the fourth frame. One. It was interesting when we were listening to the four former world champions talking about Marco and Ken Doherty said that Marco sometimes may be a little bit negative. I think Ken was right, but he certainly hasn't been negative in this year's Maplin UK Championship. He's made eight century breaks. Three. So maybe Marco had been listening to the darling of Dublin, Ken Doherty, and maybe he has just... Uh, Changed this game slightly. What a miss. Three. And that's as much as an emotion as I've ever seen from Marco there, Dennis. That he just uh, virtually smiled after missing that. He just couldn't believe he could miss it. As Ken Doherty and Steve mentioned in that little interview, that you can very, very, very rarely tell what Marco Fu's thinking. He's got a wonderful temperament. All the Asian players have though, Dennis, haven't they? You know, remember what? James Watanai, he was another one you could never tell how he felt. Well, they are a very mild-mannered 
nation when you go out to play there you couldn't meet nicer people anywhere in the world both Chinese and Thai people bit betwixt and between. The red nearest the pocket will pot. The red is nearest to the white will pot, but neither of which will avail good position. I don't know whether you can get through to the red that's nearest the black. He's just coming to have a look at the angle of that. He, he might decide to play that virtually dead weight, which means you can stand the black. Let's have a little look at the angle on the one next to the red. There's the one I'm talking about, but the best he can do is finish four or five inches off the cushion, so the black's going to be tough as well. Looks a bit tight, that to me. Yeah, he's taking the other one. No. Oh, thought that had missed. Seven. But he's not on the colour. Well, he's on the green, <laughs> as you can see, but not to pot it. I thought this red had missed. Yeah, so did I, but. Uh, even so, he'd never give the white a chance to come in out of ball. He's, he's not hitting the ball well at all at the moment. I think Ian has called Green. touching Green. ball there, so... Playing away from it. Sean Murphy set. As long as he didn't, if, if it was touching and he hadn't moved the green slightly, it would have been a foul mm. shot. <coughs> and not easy to come off the side cushion and nestle on the red to the <coughs> right of the black. The other red is preventing that. <coughs> Unless Marco feels that he can manage to get to that one, he'd have to be so accurate to get to that one. I mean, he normally he would play that escape there, but the other red, if he catches that, he would uh, leave Sean in. Would have to play it with an awful lot of side then, wouldn't he? Playing ball looks to be going wide, so he needs side as well. It's a dangerous one. He may still play for that red. He's looking at the option now of playing for the red in ball, but it's one of those, if you hit it full ball, it's fine. If you, if you don't, the white's coming right back at this end. He's just planning to roll up to it. You can never tell with Marco's cue action because he doesn't really pull the cue back very far. Good shot. Slight chance of a pot in the middle though. shot that he's looking at is just glancing off the red. He's trying to find the ball cushion with the white, but he's also trying to cover the red with either the yellow or the brown. <coughs> Still the shot to play, even if he didn't cover the red. If he gets the white tight on the cushion, it'll make it awkward. to cut it in the middle and still get the white back into Bork, but the pace the red would be travelling, he would leave it if it didn't go in, so he, he'd, he'd probably just play a different safety shot to that. Might just be taking that cut on to the middle. Foul. <coughs> Sean Murphy, four. Marco had worked out he could have a free shot at that. If he missed the pot, he'd get the white back into the ball carry, but he hit it very hard. <coughs> the 
because he missed the pot, he got the in off. But this is not an easy chance for Sean here. Black out of commission at the moment. If he takes this on, he'll have to swing it around the angles to get to the blue. This one here, if he stops the white dead, he'd have the pink for the middle pocket. So is he going to fully commit for this? Knew he was going to stick Marco up, but he felt he was queuing well enough to pot that and leave the pink. So this is a chance now for Marco. A surprising choice of shot, the way that Marco is playing at the moment. Uh, what you don't want to do is give your opponent an easy chance. And I know he's only 29 points in front, but that could evaporate very quickly here. That was a little bit careless of Sean taking one. that one on. That's pretty poor to leave the white on the cushion. Now it means if he rolls the blue and he could run out of position and not leave an easy red on. I think he's just checking to see if the angle's on just to roll this blue and then kiss into the red. He knows he can't go in off because the red's in the way, but he'd probably be just trying to roll it in and push the red a little bit nearer the pocket just to slow the white down more than anything else. So he was concentrating so much two, on the kiss, one. forgot the pot. <coughs> oh, Sean doesn't win this frame, he'll be kicking himself. I don't know if he can cannon the reds when potting this, the three reds, just to hold the white. No, it's just, it was a thin one. One. A couple of reds available up around the pink spot. As long as he misses the blue, if he comes off the side cushion. not bad he wanted Fine. to be closer to them but should be okay six yeah, this is the key ball if he gets the pink in play it's going to be easy to get the remaining 20 or 30 points he needs to win this frame if he just works on the blue and bought colors it's going to be a tough little break but with the pink in play shouldn't be a problem Team. 47 point lead, so red and colour. And it's to be a relief, Sean Murphy, really, to go 3 2 in front because uh, once 19. again he's needed three chances in this frame. <coughs> the match has not really took off yet, it will do. These two players have played so well this week. Yeah, it looked as if the match had 20. taken off. 99 break and 102, and the mid-session interval arrived, and uh, it's been a bit of a scrappy start to this session. But Sean Murphy 26. will be delighted, having left a few chances for Marco to take the frame quite comfortably. 27. Thirty-two. Thirty-three. 
What about this for a shot? What about that for a position? Thirty seven. Thirty eight. Bit of exhibition stuff. You'd normally take the pink, going for the long blue. You won't bother about missing that. 38 and frame. Well, both players had chances in that frame, but it was Sean Murphy who did take it, and he'll be delighted to go into a three frames to two lead. Uh, Marco Fu with Terry Griffiths. I don't know, perhaps we'll get Terry to actually say at some stage what he's actually helping ah, him with. We'll extricate the information, won't we? The good thing is, though, Hazel, you can ask a question and get an answer. It might, some, might take somebody 20 years of experience to find out. So if you can go and spend an afternoon with someone and they can tell you in five minutes, it's got to be worth doing. Well, it's certainly paying dividends for both men. Marco at the table. It's one of life's mysteries why Parrot and Davis have not been to see me. There's no answer to that one, will it? <laughs> now, this is an awkward chance here. If he takes it on, he's got to get it. Well, he played it in such a way as he wasn't going to leave anything easy for Sean. But just going back to coaches, there, there was never any coaches in the game until Frank Callan came along, and Frank has coached the two boys in the studio there, and Terry Griffiths, six or seven world champions. Frank coached, and that's where it all stemmed from, Willie. Everybody took a leaf out of Frank's book. In fact, he was even coaching in the days of when Joe Davis was playing. He was studying the game. Frank knows more about the game than, than anybody living. Got to be a little bit careful. Marco's not queuing that well at the moment. In this thin safety shot, if you catch it a fraction thick, he'll be catching the jewels. And when you're playing well, these are straightforward, but I don't think Marco's queuing at the moment. Played that one okay, though. <coughs> Chance of an aggressive safety shot for Sean, should he want to play it that way. Well, that would be a bonus if there's a three ball plant on. Well, there you see it. There's a possibility. One. Why do we do that, Dennis? Why, when there's a plant on, do we play the shot to nothing instead of playing in and out of ball? Everybody does it, don't they? He's OK this time, though, because he's left with an angle on the brown to get back up to the reds. I must admit, Ronnie O'Sullivan's the only one I see that, uh, if he knew that plant was on, Ronnie just rolled it in half ball and been on blue or bought colour. You know, most people play it as a shot to nothing, just to try to talk themselves out of the plant being on sometimes. Six. Very good chance now. OK, the black's tied up at the moment, but... <coughs> Sean could develop that in a few shots' time, although it's not going to be easy just looking at the way those three reds are. Twelve. We know that the one above the black pot's quite straightforwardly, but you can see the black's not available there, so as Dennis mentioned, a little bit of work to do yet. Thirteen. <coughs> Chance to remove one of the reds here. You have to play for the blue. Eighteen. The one just above the black. If he removes that, it'll help the situation around the black spot area. Great natural Thanks. cue action, Sean Murphy. 
I remember going down and practicing with him for two or three days when he was just turning pro and <coughs> he was knocking century breaks in for fun. Very similar acting to uh, Stephen Lee, isn't he? Um, he's got a wonderful cue action. I mean, stance and everything about Sean's action is absolutely perfect. I mean, you can't get a better stance than that. That's just beautiful. Twenty-four. Might just uh, see a test of that cue action here. Watch the shot here because he's got to play for the blue again. And he did that without much effort. Twenty-five. Okay, he's going to be a little bit awkward <laughs> finishing close to the cushion. <coughs> That's what he thinks of the shot. <laughs> Might be able to get on the red to the left of the black, but he's got to use a bit of pace to get there. <coughs> it's a good effort, but not quite good enough. 30. And the long red up into the corner is no use to him because he'd run into the reds. He's looking at the option of just leaving the white where the red is and playing for the black. I suppose if it's straight enough, Dennis, it's, a, it's one use worth taking a risk. Well, if it's straight, he can run it through. He, yeah, it is straight. He won't go into the reds. Good queuing there. 31. That's a beautiful shot. That's probably one of the shots of the match so far. And even though he's got a good angle, he'll probably play for the loose red here because that frees the black into both pockets. This is a bit more like it, isn't it? Uh, at least we know now one player appears to be in stroke. It just remains to be seen how long it's going to take Marco to get in stroke as we watch this excellent long pot. This is the key shot. Angle on black or blue, whichever he decides for. Black, I think he'll play for. This is the one. He hasn't been playing this well this week. He's been hitting the white a little bit too high on this shot and he's hit it just below centre, then it won't arc as wide. Has he spotted something else that pots? No, that's the way you see. If he'd have played that with topspin, it would have arced wider. The fact that he played it just below topspin means that it doesn't arc as much. 44. Once again, he's going to have to pull a good pot out to keep the break going. Miss Cannon on the brown. 45. Just overran it, has he? Oh, if he's got an angle, he's gonna not got an angle, he's gonna struggle to get on a red. Yeah, you can force it through with a bit of side. I think he can get into the reds. Played it well. Yes, whenever you play a shot like that, you deserve to win the 50. frame. You haven't got any real idea what red you're going to hit there. You're just playing in an area, and if you play in the right area, you've got every chance of making something happen. And if this red goes in, it will be a frame winner. Fifty-one. It just seems to be taking control here, Sean Murphy. Marco Fu is going to have to get his act together because when Sean gets in this sort of mood, he can. Win two or three frames in no time at all. Well, we thought that against uh, Ali Carter, didn't we? We led 4-1, Dennis. And, uh, mm -hmm. yep. Sorry, when Ali Carter led 4-1, we thought Marco was out of it. And then he played his best snooker. Yes, he's quite capable of doing that. He's made, as we mentioned before, eight centuries. So he's played as well as anyone in this year's UK Championship. 58. You don't fluke your way through to the final of a, a UK or a World Championship because of the long frames. Once again, the knowledgeable audience here know that that was 65 frame ball there, so just one more red needed. Loud round of applause.
yours this time, but under hit it slightly. May have to play the cannon on the one next to the pink just to slow the white down. The key thing here, though, Dennis, isn't it? Make sure you pot the black and then you've won the frame regardless of whether Marco comes back to the table. With. Played it nicely, that. You do that a lot of times in breaks. You play little cannons just to, to halt the white. Gonna have to play this with a bit of side though. We can see enough of this. Doesn't have to play any side. Well, what a shame. It just looked like we were gonna get a century there Sean from uh, Sean Murphy. Marco Fu stays in his chair. So Sean Murphy with a break of 73 goes further clear at 4-2. Two more frames to be played in this session and a possible 11 frames this evening. So Marco would like to win at least one of them. Take some queuing if he's going to take this on. <coughs> oh, where's that red going to finish? Pretty good effort. He knew he was going to get the white back up the table, but the red could have dropped anywhere. It's just drifted by the, the pack there, and it is on, but he can't get round the back of the back plain ball. If he plays it plain ball, he'll hit the red to the left of the black, so he'll probably decide to play a safety here rather than the pot on that. He's playing off the edge of the bunch. The red will probably free the black here as well, the, if he plays it up and down. No, not quite, but he's played a good white. Needs a bit more pace, though. Well, Marco... Earlier on in the week, you'd have fancied him knocking one of these long ones in, but at the moment he's not been queuing it at his best. There you see, only 50% of the long pots going in for Marco. One. Always nice to knock that type of shot in, just restores your confidence. Pink out of commission at the moment. Black very awkward. I don't think it pots into the right corner. But if he could drop on the red that's closest to the black, then he might be able to develop that eventually. So that's where it's difficult to know whether the black goes or the red goes. They're almost touching. Looking at it from this angle, you would feel the red would go, not the black. Mark, Mark was coming around to have a look at that. Um, you'll probably be able to tell. If he screws back for the blue, you'll know that the black doesn't pot. Well, can he get to the Six. pink? That looks tight, so maybe he feels the black goes. It is one of those where <laughs> it's difficult to pick out which of the balls will pot. Marco Fields, the black goes. Yeah, the late great Cliff Wilson used to say to me, that if you think a ball pots first time, it definitely does. You know, we tend to talk ourselves out of it sometimes, and it clearly went there, didn't it? <coughs> Looked like it was touching ball, and that one shot has developed this into a, a very good chance. You know, the red never moved at all.
Mark was going to have to call on that wonderful temperament of his in these two final frames of this session. Twenty-two. Yes, yeah, some reflection of what we've seen in the opening six frames. If he does get out four-four, he'll think it's uh, Christmas come a few days early because he, he's been outplayed in this session. Really, <coughs> there's always one player that feels they've let things slip at any interval, any match. Twenty-nine. And it would be Sean if it did end at four-four. 30. This is exactly what he did against Ali Carter when Ali started playing well. Marco responded. 37. He's doing it here. 38. Still a couple of reds to play on. In fact, one at the back of the bunch might be available, so need no need to go into them. Just watch where he leaves the cue ball here. He'll leave a choice of three reds. Yeah, one to the middle, one to the right corner, and the one at the back of the bunch. Uh, you're always leaving 45. yourself options. Forty-six. <coughs> Fifty-three. I don't think Marco got a heavy contact there. It's because of the way he's going to roll this red and he's having the white cleaned. It's the type of shot where you might get a heavy contact. Fifty-four. Well, even though, even though he made a century in the fourth frame, this is the best he's looked in this match so far. He started this break with a very good shot to nothing, a red at distance where he played around the back of the pack. And uh, the 102 was, you know, he didn't really have to work too much for it. This has been very, very good. This was the opening red he played. And the white, of course, 61. went around the back of the bunch and ended up being nicely on the blue. And the rest is what he's got now, 61 and counting. Very good. 62. Oh, he's left that one just a little bit short. He only needed black <coughs> and one more red. And if he doesn't get out cannon on the edge of the reds, the white will slip up the table. Just needed a couple more inches pace on that. Got to be a little bit careful here. <laughs> Does the red 69. go? That was the best he could do from that position. But now, there you can see that red doesn't pass the pink. And as our camera moves around, we'll see that that red doesn't pot either. So he's not safe yet in this frame. Well, ideally, he'd love to put a red safe, but I can't see a safety shot that he can get the cue ball in balk and put a red safe at the same time. So he could play the aggressive safety shot, but he wouldn't really want to bring the pink out as well. Yeah, that's a clever little shot, that. But like a fool. Tried to knock the black safe. The key thing was to get a good white. He's done that, but this might be a tempter for Sean. He might just roll this in and try and stand the black. 69 in front, he wouldn't play it. 69 behind, different story. Uh, 
And that was a big kick. No wonder Sean's smiling there. White almost stopped dead. I think the white and the red both jumped there. It's unusual off a slow shot, Dennis, isn't it? You wouldn't think you'd you'd get many kicks off a slow one. But the problem with that kick, of course, it left Marco with his hand on the table. And a very easy opening red. So that should be frame over. Mark a few the question and Marco's responded with this. Very good. Nine. You just sense that this one could go right down to the wire. We could have a, a terrific final on our hands here. A lot of pressure on both players. Sixteen. Great to get your name on the UK championship trophy. Seventeen. Some fantastic names on there. Twenty-four. Never did get the hands on that one. Never played well in the UK for some reason. Always was played at Preston most of the time and never got past the semi final. Maybe it was too near home then, you've got a lot of local support and that puts a little extra pressure on, doesn't it? But it's always been a tournament where you would expect to play well over the, you know, the longer format. This has been Marco's first, what I consider to be a virtually a perfect frame. He's looked in total control throughout these two little breaks. He's had 69 and this 32 and counting. Thirty-three. Uh, Marco up to ninety percent. Thirty-nine. And that's the reason he's forty behind at the moment. Just seventy-seven percent with the safety successes. But he's taking the very nicely indeed. 47. 49. <coughs> 52. What a massive frame this last one is going to be of this session. As I mentioned earlier 56. in commentary, Sean will be very disappointed if it was 4-4. Marco Fu delighted. 61. 67. Well, he was 4-2 down. Marco Fu. What a way to respond. Breaks of 69 and 74. And he's just one behind now. Sean Murphy leads four frames to three. Um, he could well have been 6-1 in front in this match quite easily. Uh, and strangely, uh, because it's Marco, who's such a great match player, we now have the situation where, psychologically, the advantage, even though Marco's behind, is to some extent with Marco Fu. And, and if you don't kill your opponent off when you get great chances, you, at, the end of, at the end of the match, you look back and you say, well, it's my own fault. But uh, the standard has been high, so you know, it's not criticism, it's just the way it's unfolded. Mm. And as Willie and Dennis were saying, this is a big frame last before the end of this session. Yes, now we, now we used to feel against you, Mr Davis, when we'd got you beat and we'd miss a shot, like a blue in the middle, and people change gear. What blue was that, Willie? Can't remember, I forgot. Not a bad break-off shot. Marco has a path through just to catch the end of the reds on the left side. 
Oh, that's opened the reds up. He doesn't want to cannon the brown, though. And he hasn't. And that's a pretty good shot there. <laughs> He's got Sean in a spot of bother. He might have to pot his way out of trouble here. At first glance, I can't see an easy safety <coughs> shot. He might have to take a difficult pot on. Yeah, it's one of those, isn't it, where you know that if you get it, you can win the frame because the blacks are in the right-hand corner. If you miss it, you can lose the frame. I think it's worth the risk here, to be honest. If he didn't want to risk the pot, there is a shot. If he just rolls off the cushion, nestles on that, he might leave the red next to the black, though. So a tough situation. You'd fancy him getting nearer the pot if he just played to play for the black. If he tries to force his plan around the back, oh dear, this is a, this is a bit risky. Don't like this choice. Well, great pot, but, you know, it was just... I don't know, I, I couldn't Michael see that seven. happening for him there. Well, that was so unlucky. What a fantastic pot he pulled out there, and to knock the black in. <coughs> I mean, he hadn't an easy safety shot, so he put all these eggs in one basket and, well, for the black to drop in was very unfortunate. The red above the black, obviously, he doesn't pot, otherwise uh, Marco would have already been down <coughs> and played the pot. There you can see that the black stopping is hampered for the reds in the middle, so he may have got away with it, Sean, even though he had, obviously, a massive piece of bad luck. You know, when you've played a shot like that, you don't expect to lose the frame, but uh, when the black went in, but it looks like he's only left a safety. That doesn't part the one by the pink. So good news and bad news there for Sean. good spot that Marco's found for the cue ball there. He's more or less tempting Sean to have a go at this one. He was trying to get the white tight on the cushion, but Sean once again can't see an easy safety shot. There's a slight angle there, but the sort of shot you don't really want to be taking. Terrific pot, and he left himself a chance for the black. Now, this is a big shot. If this goes in, <laughs> he's right in amongst them. If it doesn't, Marco is. Well, that's a great shot. That really is. I mean, like I said, been a little bit disappointed not to be further clear. And as Steve mentioned in the Eight. studio, it could have been 6-1 the way the games have panned out, you know, with chance for chance. To play that shot under that pressure and to play it at that pace, that was top draw, that shot. Nine. <coughs> Fourteen. Well, they go top side of the blue here, then obviously the next question 15. is how quickly can you get onto the black that's where the, the easy reds are to play around the pink and black spot area and the way he's been playing you would expect him to score quite a lot here I wouldn't say it's a frame winner yet because there's a lot of pressure on this final frame for the reason that 
You know, it's 5-3 or 4-4. Four, four. makes a difference in a frame when it's like that. If it was early on in the match, I'd say it'd win the frame at this visit. Twenty-eight. Just hampered slightly for this red. Might have to take the one into the right corner, but he's had a look at that and in the end it's the thin cut so he didn't finish ideally twenty nine good recovery yeah. he did play the kiss on the previous shot to stay on the on the red he just potted but missed the kiss and that's why the position looked poor but still not out of the woods yet yeah it's all about keeping close control and you don't want to be playing little cannons when potting colours into other balls. <coughs> Sometimes you can slip out of position. He's gone a little further on the blue than he intended. That's why he's taking the brown. But there's three reds he can drop on here. Thirty-three. Thirty-four. Well, that, uh, wobbled a little bit, didn't he? He was playing choice of pink or black there, and uh, I don't think he'd actually made his mind up which one he was playing for, and the fact that that was the case. That's the reason he hit it poorly. The opening pot he knocked in. Uh, uh, well, Marco tried to leave the white tight on the cushion. This shot would have been much more difficult, but it was far from easy. It was a cracking pot, and it looks as if it's going to give him a good chance Four. of taking this final frame. But they're still a little bit awkward, a few of the reds. Yes, he followed that excellent opening red that Dennis just showed you again with a, a very, very good black, and that was as good as the red, really. This has been first class. And as was Marco in the previous frame, so the last three frames have been absolutely top draw. Having seen the match start very slowly then. 48. Yeah, the black that you mentioned, Willie. I said at the time, if he pots the black, he's got a chance of winning the frame. If he misses it, he'd stick Marco up. 49. Got a good angle on the pink here to come off the top cushion. And just watch again. He could finish on three reds if he gets the white exactly where he wants. 49. Oh, he's took his eye off the pink. Oh, Murphy. 49. Concentrated purely on the white. Yes, it's funny how the, the match has gone, Dennis. When I mentioned earlier on, if this wasn't frame eight, I would say this is a you know a, a frame-winning break. But uh, I could just feel something happening there. Oh, once again, Marco's in with a chance to dent Sean's confidence. 42 points behind. And the red is queuing over at the moment is going to be the key ball. That's the one that's going to be one. tough to get on. I don't think he has to play the cannon. I think one of the reds will be available. So a delicate little screw shot will get him over somewhere near the line. And he would leave those on. Well, maybe the wouldn't go. It's 
So he had to Please. develop them. Well, nobody will know more than Marco what this would mean to win this frame because he's just been hanging on to Sean's coattails, albeit his had breaks 102, 69 and 74. It's only the frame seven that where he made the 69 and 74, he's played superb. The 102 came after Sean missed an easy ball. So this would really hurt. Well, I was with 15. John Parrott. I thought that uh, Sean was going to stamp his authority on this match when he took that 4-2 lead, but as the boy said, Marco won't go away, but that was a bad miss from Sean there. I think this is a key shot in the frame now. Just screw back a couple of inches, and once again, he can play to move the red out that's nearest the cushion if he gets the angle on the pink. And whatever kiss he gets on that red, even if he doesn't mature the red into a puddle position, he's bound to be on the other two. So he should play the cannon here. If he doesn't, it's the wrong shot. I don't think there's any other shot available to him, Willie, is there? And he's t he's took his eye off the pink. Mark of food. And that's why 16. he didn't cannon the red as he intended. It was a natural. If he pots the pink, he moves the red out. And that is just pure tension. You would have to feel final frame of this session, both players just feeling the pressure out there. It was one of those, if he pots the pink in the middle of the pocket, it'd have hit the red thicker, which means it wouldn't have been in a safe position. So that 26-point lead now is quite big for Sean, where the reds are. <laughs> so we had the tense opening two frames. We've got a tense final frame. Pink right over the pocket makes the safety exchanges a little bit easier as long as you keep the ball this side of the table. But in playing this, he's got to be careful he doesn't get a double kiss. And well, the red might go close to the opposite corner pocket, the left corner. Caught the black. That'll do very nicely. Might be in for a little bout of safety here. because of the situation of the pink. That's where those two reds are, are now at this end of the table, rather than on the side cushion. Whoever pots the next red would feel that they'd have a chance to win the frame at one visit. Well, now that red's gone back on the side cushion, that's not the equation now for Marco. It's worth the risk, Dennis, isn't it? Playing it thin here and pushing over towards those two reds. As you say, with the pink being there, it's kind of an extra stopper, but he's playing an alternative shot than that. He'll be playing it thin. Just got to make sure he misses the jaws of the middle pocket. Which he hasn't. Of course, with the pink over the pocket, it doesn't really make a great deal of difference. <coughs> you would have liked the white up the other end of the table, but... What is Marco looking at here? Surely, does he feel he can get that red in off the pink? Surely not. At least it's <coughs> solved the problem. <coughs> Otherwise, we could have been here for quite a while with that pink over the pocket. But that definitely, well, it just wasn't on, was it? Well, I did well to get the red safe, having seen how he played it. The safety exchange, it's uh, once again in a position where whoever pots the next word has got a chance to get right back into it. Well, that's not a bad shot for sure, and that 26-point lead with red on either side of the table makes it very difficult for Marco. It's a tempt to this one down the cushion, because you can hold the white where it's somewhere near where the red is. He's on the black if it goes in. He'd be unlucky to leave the red, so this is a tempt that he might take on.
Well, I detected quite a bit of movement there from Marco while he was queuing that up. His head seemed to be moving all over the place. Now just have a look at the the movement there. You could see lifted up on it. Oh, there was quite a bit. You'll have to have a quiet word with Terry Griffiths about that one. Pressure does wonderful things, Dennis, doesn't it? You know, your back arm can go, your head can lift, your front hand can twitch. I've done them all. <laughs> I wouldn't knock somebody out in the front row. I twitched that much with my right hand. Thought it was worth taking it on, but played with an element of safety. Similar scenario here. I think Marco will take this long red on to the left of the pink. <coughs> Doesn't even fancy it. He's not even looked at it. Oh, I can't believe he's not looked at the long red. Well, it might be something to do with the uh, attempt he had previously because he didn't get close to it, so he's not pushing the boat out. Will Sean be tempted? I don't think Sean wants to know about that either at this stage. You can't blame them. He's back looking at it again. He does like to go for them, Sean. Let's make your mind up time. That is very risky. Just a little bit nearer the cushion than Marco's, wasn't it? Where Marco could get his hand on the table, Sean can't. This safety, he wants to be very, very careful with this one because he'll be cutting it towards the corner. He needs to get a good white here. And with a kiss, that's excellent. Maybe forced this time to try and roll the red in because there's no easy safety shot available. Can't see the two reds. <coughs> Blue's blocking the path through, so you just try and roll this in. The white's in. Oh, well, this is a chance now. You can leave an angle on the black, but <coughs> you can see the white was going into the pocket here, but then the double kiss <coughs> prevented that. Now, it, just checking to see if one of the two reds will pot for... And he pots this red and black. If not, he'll have to get an angle on the black to develop them. One. Doesn't want to be dead straight on the black, otherwise he can't do anything about them. I think he can force that over, you know, with the screw back. He's looking to see where he's queuing there, if he leaves the white there. When the black goes back on the spot, can he get to the potting angle? But he can force a bit of an angle there, looking at that. If he pots it in the left side of the pocket, he can get over to the reds, you would feel. Well, he's taking the pink. And well, he's looking at the pink, but... <coughs> this is missable at the pace you play it. He's got to be careful. Yes, he was worried about hitting at the pace to get there. Never give it a chance. That was a poor shot. Seven. Thirty-three Seven. point lead and a good safety in control mm. at the moment, but where the balls are, even the green to brown's not a problem where the balls are, so this is still anybody's frame.
Sean Murphy at the moment needs one red and any colour to leave Marco needing a snooker. This is a horrible shot to play. Well, he played that as well as he could. That was an excellent safety. Now, this is tough. It's so easy to can on the other red and leave a pot on here. a pretty good angle there he just uh, holds his hand up just to apologize but even if he hadn't have jawed there with the cue ball it would still have been safe but it's safer now than it would have been without that angle I think he can only play a similar sort of shot to what Marco did he'll be pushing it right over the corner here though he's going to be very careful with this one Well, it's amazing, isn't it? It's amazing. Marco had the most wonderful kiss to get it safe, apologised for the kiss, One. and it could have cost him the frame. Yeah, Sean held his hand up to apologise, but uh, that won't make Marco feel any better because he just has to roll the green in. What a way to pinch the frame. Yes, he might normally just play a little snook here, but the fact this is frame ball, just make sure the green and... Uh, have a go at the long red. <coughs> it's a shame if uh, a bit of good fortune has sport that frame. The last two or three frames have been Four. absolutely wonderful. But it's not over yet, even though he may miss this. Marco still only needs one snooker. So this is still a key pot. Sean Murphy, foot. As you mentioned, Willie, he only needs one snooker and... In the opening frame, he needed three snookers and almost pulled it off. So. Oh, look at this for an effort. Look at this, if he doesn't catch the jaws. He's still got the snooker, though. That was a terrific shot to get over behind the brown. But and this shot wouldn't have been on, Dennis, would it, Barfer? I, d I still d don't fancy him playing the Masse, but th he couldn't have possibly played it if the red hand hit the jaws. For a second, he went favourite to win the frame, Foo, because it's almost unhittable where it would have been. This is a tough one. The slower you play this, the more chance you've got of the white taking. The harder you play it, the more the white pushes out before the spin takes. Whatever he does, he doesn't want to kiss the blue, though, if he misses it, because it would leave it on. Well, he's done really well there. Really unlucky, Marco. Very, very unlucky was Marco Fu with that angle, Dennis, wasn't it? It would have been un oh, virtually unhittable. Yeah, he judged it well. But as you say, if the red had travelled further up the table, it would have been a tough snooker to get out of. Another pretty good effort here. Easy though. Behind the green would have been more difficult. <coughs> and Marco, if this finishes over the pocket, I was going to say it, he would have potted the red and. You still only need the one snooker if you've got a high-valued colour, but it's not an easy pot now, so keep the red on the table. Well, it looks as if he did try to pot it. It's 
is one of those <laughs> you, you want to have a go at it, but uh, as Dennis mentioned, if he sticks the red on, he's going to pop red and black and then play the snookers on the bought colours. It's not easy to play safe here, so he may take the pot on. <coughs> Ooh, there's a good chance of a snooker here. Red towards the green, white in behind the black, on and off the cushion. And you can play the red towards the yellow, but the key thing is to get this white in behind the black if you can. Play it the other way around. I tell you, he knows his way around, Dennis, doesn't he? Yeah, just a wee bit unlucky there. He's pushed the brown safe now. That brown is out of commission for getting in behind. Yeah, the way Marco played in the opening frame, getting a, a couple of the three snookers that he needed, he maybe take over Alan McManus's mantle. Alan McManus, uh, nickname Angles McManus. Marco's pretty good. The reason Sean took an awful long time over that pot, he knew that if he caught it slightly thick, he'd be enough was a possibility. Oh, Dennis, does he risk playing the pot here and potting pink or black, or does he keep the red up? You always would prefer to keep the, the red on the table, but, uh, you know, if he gets... I think he could take the pink and still be OK. One. He's on pink and black. So if he can get the white in a good spot here, he can play a great snooker. Just if he could get the white somewhere near the other white, he could get in behind the green. He still can manage that. Eight. Slightly more difficult. He'll have to stun it slightly. But the white a few mm. more inches across, he could have rolled the white tight up behind the green. Might still be able to manage that. He's a little tinker, isn't he? This guy from Hong Kong. Two, eight. He does know his way around the table. And if Sean can't come off the side cushion, he may be too close to the green for that. It's going to be a tough one to hit. If he goes the right side of the table, he would need so much side on it. The right side of the table, he'd have to get so much side because that second line's nowhere near the natural line after hitting the cushion, so that would be very difficult indeed. I think it's the only way, then. I think he's going to have to play the slow swerve and... The, th the key thing here is not to miss it and leave the yellow on. So if he plays this slow swerve, he's not going to leave a pot on the yellow, albeit might leave an easy snooker in behind the black again. Sometimes you have to put all your eggs in one basket. It's no good playing it hard and possibly then cannon into the black, black and leaving the yellow on. So if you play the slow swerve, you've got a chance of getting away with it. That's a pretty good shot, isn't it? Well, hats off to Mr Murphy there. That was a tough one to hit. But he would be in behind the black again. He's got the snooker again. And without the kiss on the green, it would have been much more difficult. He can come off the side cushion here and get to the yellow. You can see Sean pointing his cue. That's the line he's looking at. But if the yellow doesn't can on the green, this wouldn't have been available to him. So let's touch your right hand side.
You know something, that's another bit of good food. So I'm sure these players wouldn't be able to hit these snookers, Dennis, if you didn't put the lines up so they could have a look. We had a letter once, didn't we, from a lady saying it's not fair that Mr Taylor puts the lines up to show the players where to hit. He deserves a bit of luck here. He deserves to get the yellow safe the way this frame's gone. He worked really hard here, Marco Fu. Well, this session started really poorly. The opening two frames, there's a lot of nerves out there, but the standard of snooker from frame three has been absolutely top draw. Don't at all blame Somewhere him for playing for on. He just needs two snookers now, not the one. But Sean will relax a little bit more now that more than one snooker is required. But as Dennis mentioned, three were required in the first frame, and he nearly got them. Sean's turn to return the compliment here. He's got a chance of getting the white <coughs> in behind the brown here and pushing the green up this end. <laughs> if only I could have played the way I call the shots down, I'd have got a few quid, wouldn't I? Could never play on myself. I'm sure the oh. concession will come in. It oh, is and a wonderful oh, session of snooker, a slow start from both sure. these great players. Yeah. But an excellent finish. It's still all to play for. Okay. Sean Murphy goes into the final session, leading by five frames to three. Yes, thank you, Hazel. And good evening, everybody. And it's the atmosphere that we felt on the introductions and anything to go by. We're in for a, a terrific night's entertainment. We've had some terrific crowds here in Telford. And we came here last year for the first time, and I think it was a great success, and even more so this year, Wills. Yeah, the crowds have been excellent. OK, everybody loves to see people like Ronnie and Stephen contest major finals, but these two young men have played their part in this tournament, especially Marco. He's made eight centuries in this tournament so far. <laughs> Sean Murphy back in form, having had such a lean spell the early part of the year. It was a session this afternoon, John. I know you did four and I did the other four. And uh, it was a session that maybe, of the two players, Marco Fu wouldn't be that disappointed with 5-3, the way things turned out. Yeah, there you go. Just have a look at a few stats that over those first eight frames. Well, he's just changed to 81% with that safety. But, uh, yeah, there's a difference there, isn't there? 91% Sean Murphy, 81% Marco Fu. That means that Sean has been potting a few more balls off the safety of Marco than the other way around. <laughs> I think the big fear for Sean Murphy, Willie, is the fact that Marco Fu is a real battler in the semi-final when he was behind to Ali Carter. You know, it uh, was 5-3. He came out in the evening, all guns blazing. Yes, I think it was very similar matches, John, wasn't it? The fact that um, Ali Carter maybe felt that he should have come out of it 6-2, he didn't, and Marco turned the match around. And I'm sure Marco will take something away from that, uh, knowing that he can do it. Yes, well, I, I'll go back to last season when he beat Ronnie O'Sullivan as he plays an excellent safety shot there. When he played Ronnie O'Sullivan, he was 6-2 down in the final, the Grand Prix. Came out in the evening and won seven of the frames that they played. And beat Ronnie 9-6. I don't think he got the credit he deserved for that performance. And it was a good safety and it's forced an error from Sean Murphy. Yes, it didn't appear to be a bad reply from Sean. How he managed to Nudge a red over there off a thin shot is, uh, I suppose, a little bit unfortunate, really. He played the shot quite nicely. Pink may be available here if he wants to roll it in quite slow. 
He's betwixt One. and between, not nicely on the pink. He may hit the red first if he takes the pink in the middle. Who's our referee, Anna the Haas, will be having a, a close look at this. Played a little bit slower. I think he thought if he hit it pretty full, it was going to check off the top cushion and all for the pink to the middle. But oh, he's just <coughs> drifting up. Well, mark a full one. I'd love to have another look at that, Willie. I thought it was in for a second. Did it lift up? Yeah, I think we saw at least a quarter inch, half an inch move there. But in fairness, the opening red wasn't played as well as he would like, so the pink was always going to be tough. <laughs> Similar scenario to Sean here, the opening red's no problem. I just wonder whether he'll try and make a little bit of room around <coughs> the black spot area here by playing some sort of cannon, knowing that the pink's there. As long as he gets the white in open play, of course, he don't risk going into them softly. Mm, he's ampered queuing, so I don't think that'll be in his mind now. <coughs> Just coming up to a minute's thinking time. As you can see there, the waistcoat is very close to the pink. Oh, he's gone for the black. That tells us obviously the black pot's from here. It doesn't look like it does, but obviously it will do, otherwise he wouldn't have played there. Could do with nudging the red away from the black spot if he can. Or, or certainly giving himself a little bit more room. Now, where does the black go? <coughs> There's your answer on the pink. Eight. Probably try and work on the black for a couple of shots till he gets rid of the red on the black spot. But he doesn't really want to take the pink now because he'll put it out of play. Nine. The pink will go up on the brown spot, which is no help to him. <coughs> Sixteen. Seventy. Well, he'll have to hope that the red next to the white will pot in the corner. If it doesn't, he's got a little bit of work to do here with the cue ball. It must be very, very tight. Well, we'll know the way he plays this positional shot, whether the red to the right or the black will pot in the top corner pocket. It's obviously very tight, otherwise he'd already been gone down and played this shot quickly. So not the best positional shot he just played there. Hmm. Twenty four well, played a, a little cannon there and probably I only think he was playing for a red to the left middle. He's got this one to the left corner. Mm, well played. 25. <laughs> well, he might have to play a cannon again here just to hold the white. It's just losing the white a little bit at the moment. He needed a half ball kiss there, and as you can see here, just called a quarter ball, which is taking him away from the desired position. Still doesn't really want to play for the pink just yet. If necessary, go up for the green rather than get the pink to tie things up. I was able to hold for the black, that's well played. <laughs> Forty. 
41. Well, if he's got a nice angle, the red to the right of the black, he can play for that into the left corner pocket, just stun across the face of that red. I suppose in an ideal world, he'd rather have been a bit straighter on this 48. red. 48. Well, it looks like he's going to be forced to play in the pink now. He knows it will go on to the brown spot, but the fact that he's 48 points in front just needs to miss the kiss on the brown in playing for the red to the right of the black. So he's got to get that gap, John, isn't he, between yellow and brown? Yeah, and, and possibly the green if he decides to... Depends how thin that pink is. Well, he's playing the blue, which is missable. The pot, that is. But then it went, it looks like a good line. What about the length? It's perfect. Yeah, the key to that shot, of course, was the fact that the yellow was off its spot. I mean, he could go straight over the yellow spot and, after that shot, deserves to win the frame. 55. You notice the position on the blue here. He couldn't, if the yellow's on its spot, he couldn't play this shot. Look at the white, just virtually over the yellow spot there. And back nicely for the red. Sixty-two. Well, just the red and any colour, well, black or pink, obviously, to leave uh, Marco Food needing a snooker. And he looks 63. very sharp this evening, young Sean Murphy. Yeah, I'm sure just the start he was looking for. He came in with that two-frame advantage. First couple of frames he know were very important. And that's the first one under his belt because he's got a nice, that easy red. To put in 70 points in front with only 59 left on the table. 71. You see, you get that a lot when people are playing screw shots. You get that little bounce if you just don't cue them nicely. Anyway, as I say, the frame's safe enough. Don't have to do anything spectacular here. I mean, he'd like to make a century break, I'm certain. 72. Well, even though he didn't get his required position, it just shows you his Q power. Nice, easy double there, John, isn't it? This isn't an exhibition, Willie. This is the, the UK frame. Championship. John Murphy. <laughs> Didn't want to give Marco Fu any practice time, so he played that safety. Marco Fu had a chance, Mr. Pink in the middle. Sean Murphy did the rest. He stretched his lead to three. It's now six frames to three. Back in, but what a sophisticated, uh, controlled break. Uh, Sean Murphy played in the end there, uh, leaving that pink over the pocket in favour of the black on many occasions. Uh, a less brave player would have probably knocked that pink in uh, somewhere down the line a lot earlier. Well, Michael's already shown that he's got tenacious abilities of resilience. His comebacks in this match have already been the stuff of tremendous quality, but I wonder how important this next one is. He's three behind. Yes, for me, Hazel, very, very key. 7-3 behind, uh, Sean Murphy would start to relax a little bit more and Marco would have precious little more margin of error. So th this is, for Marco fans, the biggest frame of the match for me. As JV mentioned, this is the first time there's been a three-frame gap. It's been two occasions, two frames, at 4-2 and, of course, at the beginning of the evening at 5-3. Both players started slowly, as you would expect in a, a major final like this. The first couple of frames a day were very lengthy. But since the mid-session interval, when, uh, well, since the third frame, really, both players have played some good stuff. It's been a very good match. Yes, well played. 
It's always a little bit of a risk if you don't get the line right and you catch a bulk colour. He could have left the red in the middle of the table, but found the gap between green and brown. Good length with the cue ball. There's a bit of pressure on this now for Marco. Doesn't want to catch this too thick or too thin. this green to play the pot on this red always feel with it that this is one of his strengths in it these long pots and he can play this a little bit more confident than you would do if you were going to leave something on if he screws over towards the left hand middle pocket he can play it as a shot to nothing and be on the blue and leaves nothing if he misses and that's exactly what he's done you see beautiful shot beautiful shot I don't think there's many players in the game, although looking at long pot success, it was only 56%, but I, I don't know. I just get the feeling sometimes with Sean that he's as good as anyone in the game at the moment with those long pots. Must put a lot of pressure on his opponent when they're playing safe. Yeah, Neil Robertson, a gentleman that's won three Six. ranking events in the <coughs> last couple of years, and the, and the great Mark Williams as well there, who we consider to be the best single wall potters, but... Sean Murphy's not a million miles behind them. This was played very clear. And, and the pace he played it as well, John, he, because he had that confidence of playing it as a shot to nothing, you are able to play it at a pace where you feel controlled. Seven. Of the two players, John, uh, Sean tends to go for them a little bit more. I believe that uh, Sean's played 33 long pots and, and young Marco Fu's only played 18, so... He's always the more aggressive of the two. 14. <laughs> 15. That's twice he's played a black in that pocket, and I'm telling you, a little bit of extra pace, 22. and that doesn't drop. Twenty-three. This is another one of those where it's best to stun up into them. He'd like to hit the joint of the two reds. There's four in a line there. The two reds on the left. If he can play the stun up into that joint, it'll be on lots. If he screws it back, he might not be on anything. And yeah, caught them half ball, that's why he's lost the white. Has he been fortunate? Is there a pot in this corner? Thirty. So he caught that red half ball, he needed to push through that. I don't think there's a pot on now. Nothing there. So key to play a good safety, keep Marco Fus not been able to get his hand on the table so far in this evening's <laughs> session. Sean Murphy, 30. <coughs> well, not about bad cue ball. He has left a possible pot, as we can see, into this right corner, but it's too dangerous to go for. It's a very difficult pot, not guaranteed to be on a colour, and if he misses it, it could career into the other red, so safety the order of the day. That's a good shot. That's an excellent shot. <laughs> and that's what you've got to do sometimes at this game, play good safeties, try and force your opponent into making a mistake. And there's a chance that could happen here. And the reds, the way they spread, a mistake here could cost you the frame. I think sometimes a good safety is as good as a good long pot because it creates the opening. This is going to be able to be played very fine. If it hits it thick, it will kiss the two reds that are below the blue on the way back. If it misses the blue, that's excellent reply. That was a tough safety to play. Well played. <coughs> Yeah, 
Yes, Mark Fu gave him a problem, but he played it well. Just having a look at the table, it's not the easiest path back to Bork. There's that one that's available, John, but he, he didn't seem to want to play that because he can't do a lot with the cue ball. This safety is going to be tough. Well, he's got to hit this just right. Well, he got a good cue ball, but uh, the ready hit was careering back towards the bork end as well. But hit another red that stopped it from going over a pocket. But Sean can get through to that red near the bolt line, so it makes it an easy safety shot for Sean. Yeah, I just wonder whether he might risk playing the pot as well. So at least he, as long as he gets near the jaws, he doesn't lose the red. No, he just played a kiss into the other red and made sure the cue ball goes in a good position. But the red's come out, so it was a little bit risky, that one. But the path of the cue ball, John, is not easy, is it, to get back to ball here? Well, no, I think it's one of them, and I think he's going for this red. I think you just got to go all out for the pot and not think of the consequences. Good pot. Nice kiss on the pink. It's not bad, it's not bad. Yeah, Sean's last shot, you know, when he played the safety as we see this pot going, which was the the best pot of the evening so far. The key thing with Sean's last shot was he's got to get the white on the top cushion, and he didn't do that. It wasn't difficult to get the white back to the bought cushion. This, this was Seven. Sean's safety shot, and he'd got plenty of room to get the cue ball. And he was trying to be a little bit too clever there, bringing the other red out, but it's key to find the cushion. Now, if he's tight on the cushion, this red is too difficult. But great pot from Marco, a chance to score for the first time this evening. And boy, he needs it. <laughs> 14. Fifteen. Hmm, just under hit that slightly. Shouldn't cause a problem. Twenty-two. Actually, going back to Sean's safety shot, John, 30-point lead, and he's moved the, the red off the middle of the side cushion. If that red was still there, you'd fancy getting back to the table, wouldn't you? You may not now. Twenty-three. Well, not the best of shots. OK, let's look at this shot. The only thing I thought that he might be hitting this red into the other one on the left-hand side of the table will act as a buffer, so that red didn't come up and back down towards the bulk end or over the middle pocket. But as you say, the key was to get the cue ball tight against the bulk cushion, and he didn't do that. Twenty-eight. Thin on this red, didn't have much choice because he didn't play a good positional shot off the last red to get on the blue. So, <coughs> just got to be careful in controlling this. You would assume he'd play for the black, but it's not a formality. 29. It was never a formality. 29. Well, I have to question the pace, John. I, I can only assume he was playing around with the pink or blue. Why well, it's not? Try and get the gap a little bit left hand side. Hit that very hard anyway. If it had missed the black, I don't think it'd have been on it. 
Well, as you say, he's probably coming round for pink or blue. There's a lot of balls to avoid. Pink ball. And to be fair, a player of Marco's ability, you, you wouldn't expect him to cannon into the black full in the face. But it was a chance. Marco Fu, 29. He didn't make the most of it. But as you would expect from a top player, played a very good safety. I think he can get through to the red on the pink spot, and uh, but he can only see it on the left-hand side, which means he might play the pot on this. He might play the pot, but obviously the key thing is to get the cue ball back into Bork. Always favour the thin side in this shot, don't it? This thick, and then you've got no chance of kissing the blue. If you play it thick, you can kiss the blue. or green, both of which plenty of distance between cue ball and object ball. He'd have liked to have got into that a little bit more, wouldn't he, to come a little bit closer to pink or green. Still anybody's frame, this one. Well, that was quite a way away. to do quite a bit with the cue ball, but didn't really get any jaws of the pocket, did he? First red is not a certainty. Just screw past the middle pocket and be on green or brown. Sorry, green or, uh, sorry, brown or pink, I meant, just to get it in open play. That's what he's played. One. Pink to the two reds is tough. Don't know whether you can screw directly behind them in either the middle pocket or the corner pocket. But if there's one man who can play the shot, Sean Murphy, and he's got a beautiful. What's this ball zip back? With hardly any effort. It's all about timing and getting that cue through the cue ball to impart that backspin. Well played. What's Jay would to say? To the inch. Just wonder whether he'll leave an angle Eight. on this next red after potting the pink to play the cannon into the red and black for two reasons, to bring the red out and also to free the black as well. Because if he plays to get on the pink again, well, he hasn't got the angle to do that. So pink is going to be a tough shot to get onto the next red. 14. 14 point lead. He'll be 21 in front with two reds left. Yeah, so he needs the three remaining reds to clinch the frame at this visit. As you can imagine, a big ask. Do you play to leave the cannon edge on, or do you play to get on the loose red from the pink? 15. Well, the way he's played it, he's played to leave the cannon. I suppose playing it this way, if he gets a bad cannon, he'd still have the red along the cushion, wouldn't he? So he'd, he'd like to play into the red first, not the black. I think he'd want to... I think originally he was going to think of screwing into them direct, but he's coming off the top cushion. I've got to be honest, I thought the screw into them was the right choice, but... The run through he played, so end of break. 21. Yeah, if you screw directly into him, you got a bit more control, but as I say, when he potted the red in the middle, I think he just ran a little bit further down than he wanted to. You'd have to make him favourite for this frame, though. 21 point lead, the way the balls are situated. Sean Murphy, 21. It's not bad, although he'd like to have that again. Well, he completely misjudged it. Didn't even play to kiss the black with the red. He played to put it on the middle of the side cushion. This is a natural. If this goes in, he's on the black. And that makes the last red very easy along the cushion, whereas if he's got to go from last red to pink, it's tough. That was a really, really poor safety shot from Sean. Very poor. I 
It's a terrific opening pot, but when Sean was so close to the red, you wouldn't expect him to leave anything that was possible on. So that was careless. Doesn't want to be too straight on this red. Yeah, I mean, this safety shot, he's obviously playing just a little bit thinner than that to leave the red on the side cushion, on the back cushion. And the fact that this red where, where it is now, it's, that's the reason getting the black on its spot was so important for Marco. He's just got enough room to run around two cushions and uh, believe it or believe it not, if he finished low on the black, that could be a bonus because he might even risk bringing the Nine. green into play. He'd be unlucky not to have some sort of pot on the yellow if he plays the cannon on the green. <laughs> Looking at actually, the cannon is too dangerous. He's got a good angle to play two cushions and drop on the yellow half ball. Then he can play the cannon from yellow to green. So playing the green was far too risky. There's the two cushions. Now he needs the half ball angle. It might be a fraction too hard. Yeah, well, it was a good effort, 16. wasn't it? But he looked straight enough as he got a slight angle, just if not to move the green, to stun behind it. Ooh, he just wanted to 18. get to the side cushion and nudge the green away from the cushion. He hit the green first. That's why he's not left the pot on. Oh, Marcos turned to be a little bit careless. There's plenty of room. Green in behind the black, white in behind the brown. Still anybody's frame. Like a well, that's risky. Is he saved by the blue? I can't believe that that's how he played it. Anyway, he's got a full ball snooker, so no harm done. Just three points in it. Yeah, it's just a case of leaving plenty of distance between cue ball and object ball here, so full ball contact is what he's after. Well, he's got a resort there. Surely he's not got the sneaker back, is he? run too far. <coughs> Great pot on the green. Just got too much pace in the cue ball. Well, you have to say it's unlucky, John, wouldn't you? It was a great shot on the green. It really was. <coughs> in the players' room, obviously a lot of interesting spectators. There's Shirley, Marco's girlfriend. Fiance, I should say. She sent me a Christmas card today, bless her. And she wrote in Chinese as well. I didn't understand it, but thank you very much. Well, what do you do here, John? Do you play it thin or and get in behind the black with the white? The brown could be lost if he does that. The most important thing is get the brown safe. OK, snooker would be a bonus if you, it was automatic, but most important thing, get the object ball safe. Advice, John, and try to get a good brown, but this is potable. And if he can get round the back of the black, this is worth taking on because the natural angle is coming perfect for the blue. But 
you only take this on if you think you are definitely going around the back of the black. <coughs> Always tend to overcut these rather than hit them thick. The jewels of the middle pocket is a problem with the cue ball as well. That's a beautiful shot. Has he missed the jaws? He hasn't missed the jaws. The brown's not got in. I thought the brown was in. I took my eyes off the brown, John. I thought Settle he got down, it. Settle down, please. Thank you. I must admit, well, it, it did everything but drop. Points are level. Three balls needed. Four. Well, that's a terrific effort. <laughs> that is superb. There's the brown that Sean missed. So close, that's why it stayed in the jaws. Just the pink needed. Nice. Oh dear, he had a little twitch there on the blue, didn't he? He stayed down on the shot longer than you would have thought. Well, it was a frame that definitely could have gone either way. Marco Fu had to dig very deep there. Sean Murphy may feel he should have won it. Marco Fu did in the end, and he closes the gap to two at 6 4. Well, it looks like we're in for a great 2009 with all Thank that you. sport. Frame 11. Marco Fu to break. This is a, a good way to finish our sport in 2008. We've got a final here. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Sean would have won the last frame, he would have been taking this on just to roll it in and on off the cushion for the black, but the fact that he lost that frame <laughs> gives you different thinking sometimes. You know, maybe you've got to weigh up whether, he, whether it's worth taking a risk. And he can't really play to leave the wide at this end because the red behind the black pots. So he's in a bit of trouble here, that's an excellent break-off. He may be forced into taking it on. I love watching John Higgins play this shot, I think he's the best in the world at this shot, just to roll it in to get on the black. He plays them so well. Try to give it every chance and finish on the black. <laughs> and that's where sometimes the, the break off shot, although it leaves the red, if they don't knock the red in, it's a chance for the man who broke off. Now, this One. is a little test for me, for Marco Fu, because he's not looked that good when he's got in amongst the balls this evening. You expect a lot better from him. He's such a good break builder. Just get the feeling he's not quite settled yet. We'll know after this visit. Eight. Sixteen. There's Terry Griffiths, the coach. 29 years ago it was, Terry, when we met in the final. Yeah, I like the way you give him two frame start, John, not turning up. That was good. 70. Yeah, there's not many people playing snooker. Kept Terry waiting. <coughs> no wonder you're so fat, Terry, eating all that food. <laughs> One of the game's loveliest characters, Terry Griffiths. Marco has played for the red just below the pink. From here it doesn't look like it pots, but obviously it does. There it is. Oh, he got a horrible kick there. That's cruel. 
Why has nobody ever invented a way of not getting kicks? We've had lots of people try to tell us what's wrong. It's static, it's chalk, it's this, it's that. Be a millionaire if you could find a way, wouldn't you, John? Yeah, that's uh, so unlucky. And as I say, I was just wondering how Marco was going to react when he got in amongst the balls. And this was his big chance. And he can still pot this black. But boy, it should have been a lot easier than this. Going to be forced to play in a cannon just to slow the white down, though. That's the problem. He's overcut it a bit. Still gone in, though. Well done. And he's finished on a red. And maybe deserves to. Well, it makes me laugh when people like Steve Davis and John so Parrott tell us how tight these pockets are. That wouldn't have gone in in a club table. That must have rolled off to go in. I think, as we've said so many 51. times with Potts, Willie, if you just play it the dead weight, you give gravity every chance to take over. It's when, if that had had a, a fraction more pace, I don't think it'd have gone in. You've got to really take your hat off to Marco. He's only made three breaks over 40. Sorry, 30. This is his fourth. And we're. Sean Murphy's made eight. 37. So he just keeps hanging on in there. And if he suddenly finds a burst of form, he can get right back into this match. If he wins this frame, he'll be only one behind. 38. A moment ago, it could have been four behind. Came a little bit too straight on the blue, otherwise he'd have played 43. for a red just to the left of the main cluster. I don't think he's come on this absolutely perfect. Straight he could have rolled through for the black. I think he's going to have to play for the pink in the same pocket as the red here. It's OK. 44. I wouldn't say he's absolutely inch perfect, because to play the pink, he'll need the rest again. There's a chance, though, in potting the pink just to nudge into the main cluster, and if he brings a red into play and loosens the other one, it's a frame-winning chance. Now, the bottom one pots, does the top one as well. This is the shot he played. He's played 50. for, bring as John suggested, two reds out. And uh, if both these reds pop, which it looks like they do, as John mentioned, frame with an opportunity now. Fifty one. A little bit low, but that could work to his advantage here. The one thing he, he's got to do when he plays the cannon from the black to the reds, he's got to hit the right-hand red. That red there, and then he'd be on the other red to the corner. No, and he didn't get into it, you see. And if he's got one to the middle, he's been fortunate. 58. With that shot, and I always felt, well, and it still applies, Willie, You've got to put a little less pace into it. So he gives chance for the backspin to take effect, but he's been fortunate. I think he's got a plan B. Yeah, screwing back, he'll be kissing into the red, so he's got to be careful he doesn't hit, under hit this, <coughs> which he has done. He jabbed at it. 59. He jabbed at it, it's end of break. <laughs> There was no reason for that to happen. He's got plenty of room to get the cue back. He just jabbed at it, didn't get into it at all. He'll be putting a bought colour safe, I would presume. 59 point lead, not enough.
Marco Fu, 59. Well, I'd be disappointed. It was a frame winning opportunity, which he let slip. Will he get another one? Similar red on both sides. I wonder whether he'll go all out just to roll it in for the black. Played it as a shot to nothing. Sometimes you you know you got to take a risk when you're fifty odd behind. He probably felt that he got more chance of getting a good white and <coughs> playing at pace. They're obviously twice as hard as they are playing them at a normal pace. So a shot to nothing for Marco. He won't be playing on a colour. That was quite a long way away. But it's uh, nudged the black into a safe position, so it's not too bad. with you. I suppose the brown, but as I say, he's got such good cue power, uh, Sean, that he can play these screws on and off the cushion with hardly any effort. Just wondering whether he's got a little bit of unintentional side on that. Five. Yeah, it seemed to dig in a bit, but this was a great opening red job, wasn't it? As I say, he's, he's as good a long potter in the game. There's anyone at the moment, but he just could have done with that cue ball running a few more inches to be perfect on this red. Yellow's in the way to make it awkward. That's why he's using the rest. Normally, he'd be able to reach a shot from that position. Needs that white to travel. Thanks. It has done. Six. He's not far away from being, uh, you know, almost favoured in this frame. You can see the next four reds and colours coming after this blue. Yellow's the problem. That's where you'd like to be, isn't it? So you can get on that red that's just above the black. He decides to go the other way, but is the black. 11. We'd have love to have tried to get on the red and release the black there, wouldn't you? I couldn't even agree with you more, John. I thought it was perfect to play the shot you put up. I can only presume that the black pots, and it obviously does. 12. And that's the reason then we'll forgive him then, John, won't we? You're forgiven. Didn't want to take a risk playing the red along the top cushion. I don't really know why. 19. Because he's going to have to play it at some time. Checking the scoreboard. Three reds in any colour is OK, but he'd like to get on the black off the last ready pots. Half ball, so he can either drop in behind the yellow or try and move it down the cushion. That's thinking some six, six shots in advance. Well, this 20. helps, John. If that red's on the pink spot... Put the pink up there. It's easy to play the cannon from pink to yellow, isn't it? If you play for the pink off the last red. Yeah, that could be a possibility. But it just shows you at this standard, Marco Fu was in the balls. Poor positional shot when he potted the red in the middle. And I did say then he'd 26. let a frame winning chance slip. Would he get another one? He's not certain to. Yeah, you can't get on the pink off the last red to make that shot a possibility. So he needs an angle on the black. And he can't get the angle on the black because he's going to be potting the red in the opposite corner. So this is not over yet, this frame. He could have played on this red comfortably a few shots ago and decided 34. not to. Not it in like it was over the pocket. He'll do well now. I don't think he can play a cannon. Eight. 
anywhere near that circle. We'll give him a chance. Well, he's about three inches away from this 42. being perfect. It's just gone missable because of the pace he's going to have to play that. If he could reach it, you'd fancy him knocking it in. Yeah, will he try to reach it? Will he try to stretch over? He's trying to stretch over. The only thing is, when you stretch over like this, you've just got to make certain you're comfortable. Can't get close to the green, though, can he? That's the problem. But if he knocks the green in, he deserves to win the frame. That was a great effort. Still needs the five remaining colours. Forty-seven. The brown into the middle. It just lost the cue ball. Yeah, didn't hit the green in the middle of the pocket, did he? If he had a done, he'd have been nicely on the brown. This is difficult. This will hurt Marco if this disappears. <coughs> Not close. He worked so Murphy. hard for that. Forty-seven. But it could have all been in vain. Could have left the brown easier than this, though. Marco Fu still needs the brown and blue. I'll tell you what, John, I'm surprised he didn't risk the pot there. That could be a chance for the West. Well, he's got the snooker. Thanks. Easy to hit, but the old problem, can Sean get it safe? Yeah, the fact that it's tight on the cushion means the little swerve off the top cushion is not on. He can go around the back of this. Foul. Oh, and miss. Well, I'll definitely have it five. replaced because the last thing Marco Fu wants is that blue against the side cushion. Although he's looking at the scoreboard, he's now 17 points in front. He only needs the brown. So, yes, <coughs> just let Sean Murphy play from there or play it yourself. <coughs> Looking at the scoreboard, he only needs the brown now, so no point have it replaced and the blue put back on its spot. I think I'd be happy if I was Sean there, wouldn't you? Even though the blue's gone safe, I'd rather you know, <coughs> let it play from there or let him play from there. Yeah, they would definitely uh, put Sean back into play. I mean, you're not guaranteed to get this brown safe. <laughs> and I can understand, Marco, with, with that blue safe, it, it, it's not all about the brown now for Sean, is it? And if this doubles on, he can play the double as a shot to nothing. Because with the blue being there, if the blue is an open play, he wouldn't play a double, but there's a bit of mileage in playing the double if he wants. Decided against it, just trying to get a good white. And he hasn't got the good white, but no way Sean can play the pot this because he can't bring the blue into play, so... This isn't the easiest safety shot, either, on the brown. I mean, normally we think of a cross double, but the brown could run into the pink. If he tries to play it up and down, the same thing could happen. That, that pink's a bit of a blocker there. This isn't a straightforward safety as it looks. Sean would love to pot the brown, obviously, because he's the first one then to get the blue into play, but the pot is very risky at this distance and near the cushion. Well, he took the risk of hoping the brown would go safe, and it hasn't done. That's a very poor shot. Well, as I said, it, it wasn't straightforward to get that brown safe. Personally, I'd have tried to have played it up and down. But this brown's on, and that's all that Marco needs. It's in.
four. So 21 ahead, 18 remaining. Sean Murphy needs a snooker. <clears throat> had a chance to win this frame, had a great chance to win the last frame. Marco Fu, as the lads in the studio have been saying, he, he's like a limpet, isn't he? he never lets, just hangs on to your coattails. And not playing anywhere near his best, and he looks like being 6 5, John. It just shows you what a good match player he's become. Marco Fu, four. Bothered about leaving the blue on. I've always said that you're always a little bit worried if you only have two balls left on the table and you're playing snookers. I just feel you only get one chance at it. I mean, if I was Sean, I wouldn't be potting the blue. I'd be trying to get the snooker off the blue. At least you've got two balls to snooker behind. If he pots the blue and tries to get the snooker off the ping, I think you get one chance. Well, he's potted the blue. To me, you Five. get one chance now to play this snooker, and if you don't get it, <coughs> not certain to get another opportunity. I think it's just come a little bit close to the pink. If the white had stayed near the green spot, it would have been a little half ball shot with side. I don't think he can get the pink safe here if he plays in beyond the black. <coughs> Misjudged it. Sean Murphy, five. And the reason I say it's always difficult when there's two balls on the turf, because all Mark will do now is just roll this very slowly and not the pink in or over the pocket. Try and get a snooker from there. Look a little happier those two, didn't they, than they did about uh, 20 minutes ago. Looked like it was going to be 7-3. All of a sudden, 6-5 okay. is a distinct possibility. Good shot. If the white had been further to the left or further to the right, it, it was a, a chance for a snooker, but hampered. Hmm. Whatever he was playing there, it hasn't worked. Sean Murphy still needs a snooker, but that is a bit of a let off. Pink, and we're setting the balls up again. It's tough to hold the white at this distance, but that's what he's going to try and do hold it in behind the black. Mm, he's not queuing at the moment, queuing across the ball at the minute, <coughs> as Marco did on the previous shot. Another golden rule here, if you can't get the snooker, make certain you get the pink safe. Oh, he's trying for the snooker. What a great effort. Good effort. Well, if he plays a similar shot here from tight on the cushion, it's it's really tough, this. Well, I don't think you can get a snooker from here, can you, Willie? I mean, it was, uh, you, you just couldn't hit the pink thin enough. But at least he got the pink safe.
The way that Sean played in the first two and a half frames. If Marco can get out 6-6, six, six, that would be a body blow to Sean Murphy supporters. He seems to have dominated this session, John, and somehow Marco is going to take two of the first three frames. <coughs> Strange game. Well, unless you're winning frames with one visit, then uh, you're not really dominating, are you? And I suppose that's the difference. And Marco is a very competitive match player. And the pink, is it? This has been a, a very interesting frame. And it's a type of frame that can turn a match, or it could have done if Sean Murphy had won it, i.e. Marco Fu got in first with a break of 59. I said at the time he'd let his chance slip, would he get another one? It didn't look as though he was going to get one. We've had five minutes of play on the pink, and uh, so Sean's done well not to leave. Well, he left an easy pot on, didn't he, early on, and Marco missed it. He would do I mean, well. Sorry, yeah, John. He would do well. Marco has done well exactly. not to pot the pink. Mm. Yeah. He would do well to avoid the double kiss here as well. It's not bad. It's getting a little bit more difficult now for Marco. That's the first time that Sean's gained the upper hand on this safety exchange. The idea leaves the pink as far away from the black as possible. Apart from one occasion, Sean's not really looked like getting a snooker. Well, the great audiences here, you can hear a pin drop. Snooker at its best. Yes, he'll have a chance now, Sean, at his next visit. Unless the pink goes right near the jaws, it's going to be tough to not leave a slight opportunity for a snooker here. So this is the first real chance he's had. He's got a chance of going up and down, crossing the pink over, but it's all about will he get in behind the black. The pink should go safe. Just needed a tad of left hand side, didn't it, there to swing the white over. Well, that thin shot's on now for Sean, round the three cushions. He can play it. take it and Marco Fu closes once again to just one frame. Trail 6-5. Well. He's certainly done extremely well to get to this final, the second most prestigious event in the sport, and this is the last one before their mid-session interval. Yes, I, I enjoyed that uh, little chat there with the boys because I think what Marco has done in the last two or three years is got belief. I, I don't think Johnny believed in himself, but maybe working with Terry has given that belief because as the lad said, he's not playing anywhere near his best. And Sean's not played too bad in this match, and it's only 6-5. Could be costly. There's Terry on the phone. Sending me a text for that, but the good words, I said, I'm sure. 
I think that uh, another thing that impresses me about Marco Fu, I mean, there's a lot of players that if they make a couple of bad shots, they let it get to him. It doesn't seem to affect him. And I've been very impressed with him all through this tournament, the latter stages of a frame. You know, where you need to play a good safety and you need to keep focused. And he knows his way around the snooker table. I think you only get that with experience. Oh, this is no good. Just travelled far enough to make it awkward. But how on earth is he leaving a red like that, will he? I'm just looking at the, the breaks in this little session this evening. We started at 5-3, obviously. Sean's made 77-30-47. Marco's only made one break of 59, and he's won two of the three frames, which tells you, tactically, at this moment in time, he's a lot stronger than Sean. Well, to leave the chance of that red was just uh, unforgivable for from Sean Murphy's point of view. Well, as I say, I think he's a strong character, Mark Fu, and he's got stronger, as Steve said, Six. over the last few seasons. But look at that. I mean, OK, if you don't get the snooker, you don't leave the red over the middle. Seven. Fourteen. Well, packed crowd here at the Telford International Centre, and uh, they've witnessed some great snooker this week. A 147 from Ding Zhongwei. Many centuries from the other top players in the world. And uh, I wonder how many of those people in the crowd would have made a 100 break in their life. But there's a few. It's got the angle on the blue, but it's not the best pink to go in because the pink is just slightly separated from the cluster, so he's playing the yellow and playing for this red near the bolt cushion. Now, what would be a good way to play this is to play for a bolt colour, yellow or green, and leave the angle so you can Seven. come into the side of the, the cluster of reds. That's the problem with the pink. You hit the pink and... Not certain to hit the reds. 18. I took your advice, John. He's got the perfect angle here on the brown, all yellow. Well, he's decided on the brown. I don't know whether he can get into him off the brown. Well, he could. Oh! Did they move? Those reds moved. 22. Yes, he felt it was a... He could generate enough pace, but as you see there, we talk about fractions, and this game is all about fractions. Well, the pace he got into that was absolutely perfect. I mean, obviously, he missed the cluster, so you, it, it can't be the perfect shot, but if he'd have hit them at that pace, he'd, he'd have spread them far and wide. He was only a fraction away there of keeping this break going. Got to be a little careful here. He doesn't push a red over the right-hand corner. Looking at this pack, there's one that could head that way. There it was going, but he's hit thin to make sure. Marco Fu, 22. Well, he's in control of this match at the moment, Marco. His safety's good. He's scoring what's there, playing good safety. This is a massive frame. I think it's a bigger frame in some ways for Sean, the, the fact that Marco will still be pretty pleased to have stayed in the match, having played not as well as you would expect. Whereas Sean would feel like he's missed too many chances in this opening three or four frames. 
Paul, and the miss. Marco Fufo. Well, it was a safety shot that called for a very thin contact. Yeah. Can't play safe down the left-hand side of the table as we look. I think there was a possibility the Reddy's trying to play thin off. He could possibly pot it in the right corner, but it's Close much to too the risky. Or oh, well, maybe he can't pot it. I'm going to look at the markers monitor. Right, I think this is one of the times I don't like this, John. I, I, I tend to think they should just let the player put it back because he's going to play the same shot. No, it looks as though it's perfect where it was. He used to hit it this time, though. Oh, much too thick. Where's the red going? It's going in the pocket. One. Well, the only good news for Marco there is the fact that Sean's not on a colour. I don't think the blue passes the green. So the fluke might only cost him one point. Another day, something like that could cost you a frame. Still fortunate though, because if it doesn't drop, it'd have been there for Marco. Sean Murphy won. Well, that's not a bad shot, but Marco's got the same problem now, the thin safety shot. I don't think he can get down to the left-hand side of the pack. He can certainly hit the one down the right-hand side. But he feels that uh, the way he's looking, he may be able to get down the left-hand side. He's going to have to swing it around with a little bit of right-hand side. So that's once again a bad shot from Sean, leaving that side of the pack available. The dreaded middle pocket bump. Now what's he left? Not much to this corner pocket. The red that the cue ball's closest to obviously is possible. Well, he can get to this red below the pink, but he's kissing the pink. Is he guaranteed to be on a colour? Seven. Just about on this pink to the middle. A little bit straighter would have been a little bit better. Ooh, is that high? Is that high? Marco Fu, eight. In an earlier frame this evening, he missed a pink to the the opposite middle pocket, and I think it hit just about the same place. He lost that frame. One. 
Yes, needs to work on the pink for the next five or six reds. Doesn't want to risk getting the black into play. There's plenty of room around the pink spot now. The pink will be available into all the main corner pockets. He's done his best to run out of position now. I thought he was going to rest on the red for a minute. <coughs> These are key moments for me. For Sean. Marco Fu's battled his heart out in this match to get back into it. Eight. <coughs> He's back in good position now. 13. Fourteen. Yes, playing it this way, he'll just not one red onto the other. The one over 20. the pocket can't be missed. The only thing you've got to be careful here that you don't pot the two reds together. He made certain that he didn't do that, but playing at that pace, he was never going to leave the other red over the pocket. And also, with the red running loose, the white could have kissed into it and it had been nowhere. It was very risky, that. Just, well, just watch how close, John, if we get a chance to show you this again in a minute, how close this white was to hitting the red that was running free. Just watch this. 27. It kisses the white there, it's end of break. Obviously, Sean, just feeling a little bit at the moment, and it's always been the way, hasn't it, with certain players, but when they feel that little bit of pressure, they, they like to play firm shots. You know, some players, when they're under the cost, just just like to roll everything in. Yeah, it's been more noticeable in this break, 34. hasn't it, John? Everything's been a stud run-through, hasn't it? He's uh, always played them at pace. Uh, the red below the black. I don't know what the situation is with that. 35. Well, he's played top side of the blue there, and they overhit it by a foot. Actually, the blue's still OK if he wants to roll it in. You should have a look at it, actually. He's not looked at it yet. Yeah, I'm not certain he's in the mood to roll balls in at the moment. Oh, this looks good. This looks good. Tremendous. What a good shot that was. Oh, that's the best positional shot of the match under pressure. There wasn't a lot of room there in between the blue and that to get them in. Always played to bring the red out and missed it. I'm sure he can't believe he's missed the cannon. 39. It might have turned out OK, though. The blue's gone in a position where he can still play the cannon. Well, what a result he's had there. Have <coughs> oh, he missed that cannon to flick the blue and leaves a nice angle on the blue to pop the blue and have another go at it? Very lucky. What he must do here, though, is make sure he hits one or the other, black or red. You can't afford to play inside it, and he has played inside it. That's so careless, it's unbelievable. He's got to play wide there to make sure of some 44. sort of cannon. The frame's still live. 44. Well, he got a break of 44 there, Sean Murphy. It's probably one of the hardest he's ever had to make. He never looked in good control of the cue ball. Couldn't have played that safety shot much worse. But not left the red. I know that he wouldn't need the black if he pots red and clears, but if Sean amps to pot one or two colours, that black could be in Sean's favour as well, it going safe. But obviously he'd need to pot another couple of balls for that to be the, the case. That's a good pace. Okay. 
He won't be taking the pot on. And the safety is not straightforward. Now that's more like the safety shots that you should be playing. That was first class. Yes, well played, Marco. Played from behind. Oh, he's unlucky with a kiss. Without the kiss, he'd have snookered short. Yes, it's not the easiest of pots, cue ball being close <coughs> to this cushion. And if he plays the up and down with the red, he's got to be careful of the double kiss. So it's not straightforward, this. Well, he couldn't play a good safety, went all out for the pot. And he's left a chance for Marco, this red is on to the left middle. One good pot here, and we could be all square. Well, he's changed his mind twice on the shot there. You saw him queue in high, then you saw him dip down low, and that's one thing you've got to do, stand back and make your mind up before you get down. If he stuns it, and it's surely on blue or pink. As you can see now, decided on the stun shot. The run through is the easier pot, but I, I think he loses the white a little bit. I'm not sure whether he can avoid the kiss on the blue if he runs through. Well, run through is decided on. Yeah, kissing the blue is a possibility here. It was a surprising choice, but the good news is he's got a good white. I don't know where the red's gone, but he's got a good white. So it's Marco's turn to have a bit of good fortune there. Always a tough shot, and as we could see when he kept getting up and down, he wasn't comfortable with it. That's not the best shot from Sean. You'd expect him to be snookered when he comes back to the table now. Well, that's a bad shot. It's very poor. That's the first really careless safety shot I've seen Marco play in this match. And in, for the first time, we saw a little bit of movement in the head there, a little shake of the head. But the way things are going at the minute, this pot is tough under this pressure. Sean's under it at the moment. <laughs> you can't believe this. You cannot believe this. Wow, well, that's incredible, isn't it? How unlucky was this? I mean, if it had gone directly and off, you say, well, the pockets are always there, but just to flick off the black. Two. There's lots of frames can turn matches. Bits of luck here, bits of luck there. Could that bit of bad luck for Sean Murphy? Certainly looks to have swung this frame in Marco's favour. Five. It's two points behind. Sean Murphy fearing the worst. Marco needs brown, blue and pink to level. Nine.
decided to risk playing the 14. pink at distance rather than just rolling it in. But you wouldn't expect Marco to miss this. I haven't seen what happened to Sean. He's made one break over 50 in this session. Sean's made f nearly four over 40, and he's lost the session 3-1. winning the session 3-1. He did what he wanted to do, win three of the four frames, and he levels at six all. Thank you. 13th frame. Marco Fu, Marco Fu to break. was 6-3 down, but uh, a run of three straight frames has brought him level at six all, with a possible seven to play. It looks like being a late night here, and uh, in China, to watch this match, they'd have to have watched through the night. They're about eight hours ahead of us. Snooker for breakfast. Fantastic long pot. That's the way to start the opening frame after the mid-session interval. OK, there's no easy chance just yet. Black and pink tied up. Yeah, the pot success rate, uh, he's down at 87%, Sean, at the moment. Uh, that's freed the pink, and he's been a bit unlucky there. Six. Well, how did the black get there? Black might not be all that bad. It might just pot up past that red, and if he can get in behind the black eventually. He's just looking at it there, as you can see. That'll be for a few shots time, you would feel. <coughs> well, maybe he's going to go straight Seven. for it this time. So it's an early key shot. This black would be more certain if he was six inches closer. Black still available into the same pocket, but can he get over the left side of the table? It's going to be awkward. Okay. A couple of reds he could cannon into, which would spoil him getting on the black. He would have to get over there, and that looks impossible. He might have to try and play for the blue here. And even playing for the blue, he has to play it with a trace of side. And playing with that side, he's miscued. Sean Murphy, 14. Very rare you see that. as if he went over the top of the cue ball in the end. <coughs> oh, and he's took a little bit of a lump out of the tip of the cue there. Look, now that's not the best thing that could have happened there. He's going to have to get a little bit of sandpaper to, to file that down. He's going to have to try and forget about that. Psychologically, that could be a problem for Sean. That's the worst thing that could happen to you is to take a lump out of your tip. It 
it's not going to make a, a great deal of difference. But from a psychological point of view, when you see that little lump come out of the tip, it doesn't have to put you off. One. Well, Foo's attempt at the long red has given Murphy a good opportunity. If it's on the bottom of the tip as he's striking at it, Eight. if that little piece with the lump out is at the bottom of the shot, it's not too bad. Nine. And it is, so he may not repair that, he might just carry on. 16. He doesn't appear to be unduly concerned. 17. Delicate little cannon here would be the order of the day, just to open things up. If he just nudges that, even half ball, he'd be okay. Slip past it, but he's still okay. He's got the cannon on the other reds. There's always going to be a choice of 24. reds to get on. Twenty-five. Murphy's never been behind in this match <coughs> and this is a good chance to regain the lead. Thirty-two. Thirty-three. I suppose it was fortunate for Murphy in a sense that when he did miss Q, he didn't leave Fu a sitting red. Well, tight on the side cushion. Difficult enough for Fu to miss. Thirty-eight. It just shows you the mental 39. strength of Sean Murphy. He's lost three frames in a row, and he's come out after the interval. And he's looking very good indeed. 46. Well, 47. That struggled in. <coughs> yeah, when you're striking over a ball like that, so easy to get a little bit of unwanted side, and that's what happened there, but he still managed to knock it in. The thing about an interval is that it gives the player 54. time to regroup psychologically. Murphy had lost uh, three consecutive frames, but during the break he was able to clear his mind. Sean Murphy, 54. However, that red was frame ball. It wasn't difficult. So it looked like a straightforward clinch for Murphy. That for 7-6, but it may not be, provided Fu can somehow get an, an initial red.
Nothing suitable available at that visit. Well, even if he's left a path through to the red that he knocked towards the corner pocket, the green has come to his rescue. Just play the safety shot. And it's even doubtful whether he could see enough of the red to pot it. You could do with anything near a cushion, red colour, but the way they're situated, the 68 point advantage is vulnerable. a snooker. Green. Green ball. Sean Murphy won. So that looks like 7-6 to Murphy. Yeah, it's worth coming to the table and just trying to get out of the snooker and well he'll give it one <laughs> shot anyway but if he doesn't get out of the snooker it'll be a lost cause. Even if he hits a red, the odds are he's going to stick one up. And there's no red near a cushion to try and land on. He's looking to see if he can find a path through to land on the one that's near the left corner pocket. But Few balls in the road here. <coughs> Out of the snooker, but it hasn't done him any good. I think I'd have preferred to have conceded the frame rather than let Sean back to knock the remaining balls in here. One. be interesting to see if Sean does a little bit of work with the tip 16. at the end of this frame. Be interesting to see if he leaves the arena. 17. It has been known for a, a player to change the tip completely but Sean won't be doing 24. that because he's queuing very nicely with it. It doesn't seem to be interfering with the shots. Twenty-five. And if a new tip is required, there is uh, leeway in the tournament rules for uh, a fifteen-minute gap to allow that tip to be fitted. 33. Yeah, thanks to the good old super <coughs> glue. In the old days, with a wafer, it used to take hours for the tip to settle. <coughs> 40. Breaks of 54 and 40 from Murphy in that frame. Enable him to regain the lead at 7-6. And early in the frame, there was a bizarre incident. Normally, 
you only see a miscue if a player is playing from tight on the cushion or if he's attempting a deep screw but uh, this was how uh, this miscue occurred Yeah, it's very unusual, Clive. It's usually when you jump over the ball that you take a little lump out of your tip. But I think he's he's quite comfortable with it. He's done a little bit of work there. Just you can see it just sticking out of him. Yeah, he's uh, he's asked Michael Ganley, the tournament director, there just to bring. Now there's a little bit of sandpaper. Ray Reardon used to always carry a little file around with him that he used to keep in his waistcoat pocket. I think he's going to be okay with this. Yeah, just pressing Thank the file into 14. the tip more than anything else. Sean Murphy to break. Perhaps the miscue left a shiny spot. Still hasn't quite finished. That was a good effort, but he stuck the red up. This is an early chance, and it's a very good chance for Sean Murphy. Thank you. Settle down, please. Can get through for the black here. One. <coughs> he used to play with a, a bizarre tip on his cue. I remember when Sean turned professional, spending a couple of days practicing Eight. with him. And he used to use like a, a concertina tip, you know, like a spongy effect. And how he ever played with that, Nine. I'll never know, but it did work for him. But he's, he's gone to the more traditional type tip now. Now this will open the reds up. He's guaranteed to be on one, but watch the white here. Oh, he's unlucky if he's covered that. I think he's just okay. 16. <coughs> 17. First to ten wins this match and uh, the hundred thousand pounds first prize. The earlier matches were first to nine. Twenty three. Twenty four. Could well be a very late night here in the Telford Centre. I don't think any of this crowd will be leaving. 32. Crowds have been superb throughout this UK Championship. They really have come out to support the players. Yep. 
37. Jan Verhaas cleaning the cue ball, happily fully recovered from the back surgery he had during the summer. If you're going to be ill and you work in snooker, be ill in the summer. It costs you too much money in the winter. 38 again, yeah. Well, that was a terrible contact, so Jan Verhaas will have to clean the cue ball. He just had it clean previously, but at least he's still got a chance to pot the black. It didn't stop and leave him out of position. But it's a tricky little pot if he plays it with right-hand side to stop the white from going back up the table. He might just play a little stun shot to hold it. <laughs> 45. There's a better shot there rather than risking the difficult cannon with a lot of side. Of course, uh, without the kick, he would have been able to get on the red at the back of the bunch. He still looked very relaxed in the mid-session interval, Sean, even though he lost three frames in a row. Popped into the tournament office and then went out with his manager, 51. Brandon Parker, and they were somewhere near the canteen in a quiet little spot, just sitting, having a chat. Whatever they were chatting about seems to have worked. But this is the key shot coming up here. He will be opening reds and the pink. Fifty-two. Who can see himself going 8 6 down here? So this simple red is frame ball. Sixty-eight. And as we've seen so often, the mid-session interval has turned things around. But to be fair, you would have to say Sean Murphy has been the more consistent throughout this final. 71. <coughs> 72. And Mark was going to have to think back to his match with Ali Carter and produce the snooker he did against Ali to get himself right back in this final. He can still do it. Sean Murphy's looking very good indeed at the moment. 79. Yes, Fu was 5 2 down to Carter. 197. 80. Well, the way he's played here, Clive, I think all the young players will be taking little chunks out of the tip of the queue if they're <laughs> going to play like this.
Oh. Marker three four. Sean Murphy, eighty-seven. Ruling off of no significance whatsoever. The break of eighty-seven takes Murphy two frames clear. He leads by eight frames to six. Completely gone wrong uh, mm -hmm. on him. If, if Marco Fu had had an easier chance, it could have been the other way round all of a sudden. You could have been seeing Marco Fu come to the forefront. So you did need a bit of luck as well. OK, well, two in front. Needs two more, does Sean Murphy, to become Maplin United Kingdom champion. Only nine players have won both the World and UK titles. Steve Davis, Terry Griffiths, Alex Higgins, Stephen Hendry, John Parrott, John Higgins, Mark Williams, Ronnie O'Sullivan, Peter Ebden. I think I gave John Higgins twice in that list and missed out John Parrott. Dreadful thing to do. Never leave JP out. One. Yeah, he couldn't risk trying to stay on the black there. Very well played indeed. Fu has got to stick to his game, stick to his method. One of his opponents this week, Joe Perry, said that he plays exactly the same whether he's 8 0 up or 8 0 down. Five. Good temperament. Doesn't let his emotions show very much, although I'm sure they're. Bubbling away underneath. Eleven. Well, it's not a good bunch of reds to go into just yet. And that's Shirley sitting in the players room, Marco's delightful girlfriend. Yes, she did give a couple of the players a Christmas card. I had a Christmas card from her and Marco, and part 18. of it was in Chinese. So thank you very much indeed for that, Shirley. She has a, a master's degree in supply chain logistics, although I'm not sure what that is. Well, that sound, sounds good to me, Clive. <coughs> Meanwhile, Marco's still reluctant to go into the reds because they're not well placed. He'll just keep playing for the loose ones. There's three or four more reds available. I'd rather go into that bunch of reds from 25. the blue. Fu's fighting qualities were illustrated in the 2006 World Championship. In the semi-final, started the final session 15-9 down against Peter Ebden. Forced it to a deciding frame before losing 17-16. Thirty-two. He's got a bit closer to these reds than he intended. 
And he may have to take one up into the corner pocket. And that doesn't pass. It's too tight, so it's the other one to the corner. Good recovery. Good recovery. Harder than he intended, but he's okay. 39. Wanted to leave himself between the brown and the blue there. And his intention would have been to have left this red straight, get on the blue, and then cannon into the bunch. There's still one red at the right of the bunch available. <coughs> he wants 40. to just get past <coughs> the middle of the table, and that's about perfect. So into the reds this time, and if this works out, a great chance to get a frame back. He's just a wee bit unlucky. 45. It's one into the right corner, but it could have been easier. Gonna have to cannon the other red when he pots this one. He's gotta be a little bit careful. Back for the blue would be better off the other red. Took his eye off the pot, but like a fool. Forty five. As you said though, Dennis, it was slightly awkward. A bit more of a cut than he wanted to have to play. And overcut it. One. Well, that's a good starter, not so much the pot, but the way he controlled the cue ball, and what a chance now for a counter-attack here. This could be one of the keyest frames in the match. Marco, had the reds have split for him when he potted the blue, he Seven. would have taken the frame, but it didn't work out as he intended. Eight. We can just show you the splits here. He couldn't have played this any better. Opened the reds and left it just a little awkward. Fourteen. If Murphy can clear up here, he would go three up with four to play. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Not sure about the two reds next to the pink. He hasn't got an angle to do anything about it at the moment. But if the back one's not available into the left corner, he's going to have to disturb them. And see, that's a bit tight as to whether the one to the right would pot. You can just play for the one that's near the corner pocket this time. Oh. 
he'd prefer if it did pot rather than have to risk playing the cannon into them. Twenty-nine. Not good. Wanted to be either above the blue or, or at worst, straight on it. And then he so got Murphy, into twenty-nine. Marco Fu five. He got into the cue ball too much there. Yes, he was on his way around the table. He, he didn't think he'd caught hold of it as he did. He just screwed it straight in the pocket. Oh. But it was the previous shot that was the poor one. This was the, the shot here because you've got a lot of margin for error. You're better going too far and then you've got the ball colours to go at. Now where's this red going to finish up? Does it pass the yellow? Sean's having a good hard look, but no. Oh, he's under hit it. That's one of the worst shots I've ever seen Sean play. What was that? What a mistake. Foo should have been snookered on that red by means of the yellow. One. <laughs> well, if the red does pot, he needs to get somewhere near the circle to leave the back red of the two. He hasn't got a good angle to get the cue ball into that position. Looks to be straightish on the green. And not the best angle on the yellow. See, he's almost dead straight. If he screws back, he's the wrong side of the two reds. Might even, if he doesn't fancy, just push the brown onto a side cushion and play the snooker. He's got 21, 22 point, 22 point advantage. I'm nearly saying £22 advantage there, but if he wins this, it'll be a £100,000 advantage. Marco Fu, one. Snooker behind the yellow. Brown sent to a safer position. Good shot selection. Is the black in the way of the two cushion escape? I think he's just okay if he misses the black two cushions. Not touching. Much more. He could possibly have left a cut to right corner, but he's played the shot just about as well as he could have done. Trying another little nestle onto the reds off this back cushion.
he would have looked a little bit anxious there for if he misses the first red and cannons the other one he would have stuck them up but he cannon both reds tactical snooker <clears throat> trying to create an opening <laughs> Once again, he's trying to just, just land on the reds. If he hits them with any pace, Marco? he can push one on. I don't know if he can play it thin enough to miss the black and get twice across the table over behind the yellow. He might just play over towards the black, but that might be on, you know, if he plays it thin enough. He might be able to get across twice. Well, that's just as good. As long as he didn't move the red too far. Immaculate judgment of strength from Fu. Foul and a miss. And a free ball. Marco Fu, five. Yes, yeah, bound to be a free ball because. Uh, Fu can't hit uh, both edges of a red or combination of reds. Black. Yeah, he could have taken the yellow there and played for the green. If he missed the yellow, he still could have got the snooker. It all depends on the angle there. But with the free ball situation, he could take the yellow as an extra red. And if he had been able to run through where the red is now, he had two chances, a chance to pot the yellow and finish on the green, but can Sean judge it better this time? Well, he's not going to fluke a snooker behind the brown, surely. <coughs> this red Less dangerous than the other one. But he goes back on the straighter red. Foul. Hit across it. Sean Murphy four. Yeah, he just seemed to lift <laughs> a little bit with his head. Let's have a look slightly there. But it could have been worse, the red. <coughs> Cannon, the blue, has gone safe. And this is not a gimme by any means, but Sean's usually pretty good at this type of shot. When the difficulty of the shot is multiplied uh, by uh, the significance of the situation, the pot becomes more difficult. Murphy was lucky in one way that he left the cue ball tight on the side cushion. That was a tough shot.
can get through to the one that's over the pocket. Um, even well, even a cannon on the green wouldn't be a bad thing here if he plays this thin and cannons the green. He'd be in perfect shape. One. He wants to get as close to that red <coughs> so that it's a fairly comfortable pot. <coughs> and what angle has he got? <coughs> That's pretty good. Six. The way is clear for a frame winning clearance, which would give Murphy a 9 6 lead. First to 10 wins. Foo fears the worst. Murphy six. We've talked throughout this tournament about Sean Murphy's success rate, but the rest, it was at 100% in one of the matches. That's just pure tension there. But he hasn't stuck the red up. Murphy on 83% success rate with the rest. Fu 88. to get an awful lot of side on this. Sean would love to hit the cushion first and send the red back up the table, leave the white down there. That's why he's striking down on it, swerving it a little bit. No, he's caught it half ball. Not what he wanted, but it's still a tough red. Fu comes to the table, 21 in front. Trying to recover to only one frame behind at 8 7. Not an easy pot, that particularly. Not at this stage. But now that he's got it, he should go on to win the frame. How costly is that miss going to be with the rest? Sean Murphy. Four. Was a strong favourite to take this frame. Nine. So Fu passed the post in this frame. You just can't shake off this player from Hong Kong. Akafu, nine. Surprising that uh, he should have missed that, though. He let his concentration lapse. It is, though, for Murphy, two snookers to tie. <coughs> Just bridging across the cushion, cutting it back. Always missable, I suppose. The colours are not very well placed to get snookers behind. You want a colour somewhere near a cushion. Much better. Four. All over now, though, this frame.
four in the frame. Mark of Fulham. Murphy leads by eight frames to seven still, but Q Man Fu is on his trail. Right now, please. <laughs> Murphy was very near then to going three up with four to play, but uh, with his lead reduced to eight seven, it's anybody's match again. This was the shot. I thought he would just drop this in and he'd be on the bra and he played a stun shot. Just put it on the near knuckle. Still expected him to get it, but that's history. And on we go. Nobody's left the Telford International Centre. We're coming up to about seven minutes to 11, and they're, well, they're having a wee look at their watches. But they've enjoyed every second of this match. And there's more to come. Well, he's just looking to see if he had a go at the red to the right of the blue, what he might possibly leave. But that's quite a risky shot. There's a couple of safety available to him. But he does like to attack, Sean. Well, long way out. It was uh, a difficult pot, and uh, I expected to see him screwing back more than that. He may have got away with it. Once he cannoned into the other red, he wasn't guaranteed to get them safe, but everything seems to have covered each <coughs> other into the corner pocket. Can't get through to the one near the pocket. Two from the pocket. Could possibly cut in. That's tough, that one <coughs> you're looking at now. The white would go into the other reds. Don't blame him for refusing that. <laughs> Impeccable lens. I like that shot a lot, Clive, because not only has he got a good white, but he cleared the black. Black was tied up and he removed the red. was the shot that Marco played. See, the red's in an awkward spot there for the black. He's removed it and got the perfect pace with the cue ball. Can't see a way back to the bulk area for Sean here. <coughs> the position of the pink is the worst uh, complicating feature here for Murphy.
he plays this one the right side of the table he's got to get the cue ball almost tight on this ball cushion feeling that he'll have a go at the pot which is so difficult no he needs to pull up and it hasn't he's put marco in here he missed it thin therefore there was more run on the cue ball Oh, he's hit this much too hard. Oh, that's a poor shot. He had such a margin for error anywhere up past the middle of the table, and he had a choice of bulk colours. That's got to be just a bit of adrenaline that's caused him to do that. Mark of food, one. Such a huge margin of error from that simple initial red. Fu bowed his head once he realised where the cue ball was going. Well, that's one of the biggest circles I can find on my telestrator, but anywhere in that circle, I need a choice of bulk colours. And even then, you needed a bigger circle. <laughs> This is not easy because little triangle of reds, which is quite amazing. You've got six reds in the perfect triangle there. But even to nestle into the right side of those, he'd leave reds to the middle if he didn't just land on them. minute 12 and counting considering this shot which is a very nasty one well even if he tries to land on the red that's to the left of the black and near the middle pocket he might just have to it looks as if he's playing this with a lot of pace At least he hasn't left anything that can't be missed. Yeah, there is uh, one red, as you can see, into this corner. But that's risky. I think he can take a pot on the red between the pink another red play that as a free shot and get the white back up the table oh he didn't want to take that on you could tell and he was a long way off the pot <coughs> now, is it his turn to be fortunate do you know he might have covered everything <coughs> red that he missed went up and <laughs> it's finished next to the one just to the right of the blue and covered it this is a thin snick into the middle keep your eye on the cue ball here mark the food four caught it too thick but uh, again at least he hasn't left uh, an unmissable starter. <coughs> now these are the type of shots that the players practice. <coughs> this long red or medium length red. It's the type of shot that you set up and play a time and time again in practice. Good cueing, push the cue through in a straight line.
grew back enough not to leave the red on the balk line as an easy pot if he missed it. But not uh, so far that he wasn't on choice of balk colour. Three. just pure tension again didn't pull the cue back very far there if you just watch it just more or less left it there and just pushed it through but wasn't as smooth as he normally is again not a difficult shot as such but uh, the context was all One. Fu has had two very good chances and uh, only made a total of nine points from them. Decent chance for Murphy. get on the black off the next shot. If he pots the red, cannons the other red out of the way, it'll be perfectly on the black. Good chance this. Five. Murphy has won only two world ranking titles, the World Championship itself and uh, the Malta Cup of 2007. Thirteen. But if he wins this frame, he'll be within one frame of adding a ranking title in fear in status only to the World Championship. That's the cup he hopes to be lifting. That's pretty good. He couldn't just stun off the cushion and leave the reds for the left corner. They were a bit awkward for that. Just one was covering the other. And how many Seven. frames have you seen where all the balls have been removed and there's a perfect little triangle with just six reds there? Quite unusual. Yes, it's like the start of a six reds tournament. There was one in Shanghai in the summer, which uh, Ricky Walden won. Bit difficult to make a one four seven with six reds on Clyde. But what a good split and one good long pot here. And they're there for the taking.
but nothing's a formality at this stage and we've seen that in the last couple of frames and Sean has immediately played a poor positional shot 31 that white should have ran through another couple of inches he's left this very awkward now and when you're close to them not easy to judge the angle and he's got to judge the cannon on the pink correctly as well that was a poor shot from Sean if he'd played the stun run through properly he would have been on the outside red <coughs> too much stun not enough run through and a little bit of tension you can expect it from both players this is such a big day for them Amazing. Sean Murphy, 31. He seemed to be concentrating more on the cannon onto the pink and didn't push the cue through. He quit on that one, didn't follow through. Both players have failed to capitalise on very good chances in this frame. One. This is the best chance of all. Seven. Only one halfway difficult red. Mind you, I thought that Eight. about Sean's chance. <laughs> Anything can be missed at this stage. It's just who can hold themselves together now. Intended to be on the red. Uh, 16. Which is now the right hand red. But uh, still going. Should really screw this back off the cushion and out into the middle of the table. Leave himself a choice of reds. Making Murphy sweat. It's quite warm in here, but uh, I think some of the sweat is uh, tension induced. Screwed it. 30. Just means that the positional side of the next shot's <coughs> more difficult. <coughs> 31. And just overhead it again. So he's. Struggling along, but as long as he keeps potting them, he just got too much action in that. Otherwise, it would have been a straightforward black. Just try and pot this. Just get back on the red that's right next to his hand. Straight. 38. Would have been a formality. 
both for certainty of pot and position. But uh, half ball to middle requires uh, more concentration. Well, the tension continues. <coughs> Overcut it slightly. Still not a formality. For Sean Murphy, that last red is tough. One. And it's even more difficult now. <coughs> he needed a good angle Riedel. to get up to where I've put the other white. He didn't get it. Thus, the snooker. Sean Murphy won. So a few errors slipping in, which is understandable. One way was looking at those twice across the table to land on the red, but if he slips past it, he could leave it on. But somewhere near the first line might be a little bit out, but along that line might get him to the red. Uh, he's going to slip past it. Foul. Miss. Sean Murphy, four. But any more pace on that, and Sean would have <coughs> had a chance at that difficult red. I've readjusted my line slightly. Foul. The miss. So the foo, but too much. <coughs> Sean, quite happy to sit there. Okay, Marco. He's got to get a little bit nearer that first line, I think. Because it's skidding a little bit. <coughs> now, Sean Murphy has got a choice to make. That's a tough pot he's faced with there. No, it's not in. As soon as it hits the top cushion, at that pace you know it's not going to go in the pocket. Fu comes to the table, seven points in front, with a golden chance to level the match. Um, if the yellow passes the blue, he's OK. If not, he could play for the blue. He has played for the blue. One. Much better to have the blue back on its spot. Although he's not going to need it a second time anyway, but... sensed earlier this afternoon that this match was going to go right to the wire. It still could happen. Eight. Just green and brown still needed. Eleven. 
15. Well, after nine days play, we're down to the best of three to decide who wins this year's UK Championship. Murphy has held the initiative all day, but can't seem to land the knockout or near knockout punch. 26 the tenacious fool keeps coming back at him. And now the match is level at eight all with three to play. So look for some worse positional shots as the frames. Not necessarily the potting, but sometimes the positional shots become harder. Yeah, well, this is frame 17 of a possible 19. Eight all. Who's going to take this title? The crowd absolutely riveted by this. I know quite a few of them. They're snooker folk. They appreciate what they're watching. And straight away, tough shot. Yeah. It's the way he plays the game, Sean Murphy. He loves to attack, but... Uh, Look at what he's left here. What a chance One. for Marco Fu early on in this frame. Nine. No need to even think about 16. playing a cannon yet, <clears throat> the way the reds are situated. Seventeen. Twenty-four. Is it? Ding John Wei is the only other overseas player to have lifted the UK title, Clive. I don't think Cliff Thorburn ever won it. 25. No. In fact, uh, for several years, he wasn't allowed to play in it because uh, it was uh, restricted to UK nationals. Canadians not allowed. I'd forgotten about that, Clive. <laughs> 32. The trophy waiting. 33. For the winner of the 31st UK Championship. I've seen every final since Patsy Fagan won the first in 1977. And he was allowed to play in it, though uh, a Dubliner, because he was resident in London. That's pretty good. 40. Still another three potable reds after this one. 41. We can leave the white <coughs> in the middle of the table here. You'll have a choice of reds. 
four to three. Caught it a bit on the thickish side there. He wanted the white further out into the table. He's still okay though. Well, he caught that one thick as well, and that one didn't go in. Mark of food, 43. Well, we did say that you can expect misses coming from both players. The tension out there is electric at the moment. Fu shakes his head in disbelief. He's probably thinking, I wouldn't miss that shot once a month. Very few frames today have been clean kills with one scoring visit. In most of them, somebody's got in, made a few, there's been a counter attack, successful or not. Jan Verhaas Seven. replaces the pink as near as possible to its own spot in a direct line between it and the black spot. No spot being available. Eight. Still one red available. He's looking to see if there's a possible plant the other side, but uh, he'll be screwing back off the cushion here. If he's got the correct angle, screw back just past his hand. Has he got enough side on it? That's well played. Fifteen. Sixteen. Key shot coming up. He's unlucky. He can always stick in the back of them, but he couldn't have played it much better. Twenty-three. He's very unlucky. Played it with enough pace. And as you can see, caught the red full ball, a half ball contact, and the white wouldn't have stuck in between pink and red. Not touching the red either. So there's no uh, easy shot away to the ball cushion. Couldn't have finished worse. <coughs> Just slides off the red. He's got to get it spot on. He got, he's got to get it over near the corner pocket and tight on the cushion. Oh, he's in the pocket. He's oh. Played it oh. straight into the pocket. Mark a full four. But listen, under the circumstances, this long red is far from easy. That's very good. One. <laughs> Will the player's technique and straight cueing hold up under pressure. That time it did.
Uh, this red is much easier than the one he missed Eight. into the same pocket. Nine. Just overscrewed it. That's just the tension that Steve Davis was mentioning in the studio. And we know when you're under pressure, you do overhit the ball. Not that he overhit it many times <laughs> in the 80s. Eight. 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 Eleven. Closing in on a 9 8 lead to get ahead for the first time in the match. Twelve. <laughs> Would like to have been above the blue. <laughs> Seventeen. Needed a little bit more pace under these circumstances. You want to get as close to the object ball as possible. Red and colour needed for a 9-8 lead. Eighteen. And he won't be missing the blue. That was a pretty good pot because his hand was in the pocket. It was awkward with the bridging there. Twenty-three. That's six-three behind. It wasn't looking good for Marco Fu. But he's just gone favourite. 24. It didn't look good either when he was 8-6 down and almost 9-6. But this will be the third consecutive frame that he's won. Twenty-six. Sean Murphy's got a fantastic temperament also. He's going to have to call 32 on that. 34. But he's going to have to win the two remaining frames. Thirty-seven. Forty-one. Fu went into the lead with a break of forty-three in this frame. Murphy did have a chance 46. to come back at him. But with this clinching effort, Marco Fu, 46. Marco Fu leads by frame. nine frames to eight in front for the first time today, and one up with two to play. Um, it Thank hasn't necessarily 18. been the best standard these two players Sean have Murphy produced throughout the whole tournament. And obviously with the tension that arises in a game, that can be the case. But because there's been mistakes, and as was mentioned, not so many frames have been one in one visit, it's actually been very fascinating. It has indeed, Steve. Yep, Marco Fu, one frame away from his biggest ever payday and perhaps the most important win of his career. It would be. He won the Grand Prix in Aberdeen 14 months ago at uh, the UK is the more important 
of the two tournaments. <laughs> Shirley on the phone, conveying the glad tidings to someone or other. It's the first time that she's been to a tournament with Marco. Perhaps she thinks he always plays as well as this. Be interesting to see how he plays the safety shot. Yeah, he's playing the single red rather than opening the bunch and playing the safety off the pack. To be fair to Sean in that last frame, he was a little bit unlucky when he potted the black. He played this really well and plenty of pace and he just stuck in the bunch and he had no safety shot and went in off the red and that was frame over. Well, he played the aggressive safety shot, opening the bunch, but look where the red's gone. Marco refused to play the safety <coughs> shot off the bunch when he was last at the table. Sean took the risk. One. Not absolutely A1. Well, does he fully commit here? If he pots the blue and screws back, he'll leave himself a choice of reds. The one nears the white, the two nears the cushion. It's a bit awkward with the bridging, though. He did foul one earlier this afternoon when he lent on the ball. And that's caused him to miss the blue. <laughs> Marco Fu one. Bridging slightly awkwardly. Couldn't get his body down in a position of maximum comfort. That's what caused the failed blue. What Sean was looking at there was the red next to the black, so his intention is red into the middle pocket. Play it on for one of the bulk colours. And then Hopefully back up for that red that's right next to the black. That's the plan. One. And if he's got the angle on the green, he can screw back for that red. Yeah. Well, he's got a choice of reds, but he can get there. Oh, he's overscrewed it, has he? Four. Not bad, a little bit closer to the cushion than he would have liked. And he's got a strike downwards. Well Five. cued. <laughs> <laughs> well, if any shot will restore your confidence, that type of shot will. Thirteen. It's a terrific chance to get a few points on the board here in this frame that he badly 20. needs to stay in this year's Maplin UK Championship.
21. Play over for the two reds, you would think, this time. Near the cushion. Twenty-eight. How costly is that mist blue going to be? Twenty-nine. Key shot coming up. If he cannons in the middle of the two reds, he would be okay. That's the one. If he cannons that, he'd be perfect. He hit the other red. That's not what he intended. He's still okay, but... 36. Just caught the first red. That series of little cannons has left him on choice of reds. Wasn't his intention, though. Both players have demonstrated a slightly unsure touch in the last uh, two or three frames because of the rising tide of tension. Thirty-seven. loose red to play for the ones in the bunch look like they're covering each other and the blues in the way to cannon into the reds and pink from the yellow that is and what sort of angle has he got on the green can he just stun up for the loose red he's overscrewed it he was trying to get the white close to the cushion again 40 Tricky little cutback now. Got into the cue ball too much to get uh, the desired position. Well rescued. 41. This is the cannon again, if he can cannon. In the middle of the two reds, it'd be perfect. He's played it well. 48. And this will release another red. Fifty-seven. And Sean Murphy showing what a class act he is. He was put under extreme pressure, and this is how he's responded. There's the difference, just this 64. straightforward red to the middle pocket. And it's going to be down to a one-frame shootout. Incredible. Fu had first chance in this frame, but from his initial red, he didn't get properly on the blue and missed it. 65. <laughs> the applause recognises not the difficulty of the shot, 
but its significance. Sixty-eight. Just trying for the century, probably try and just slip on the pink here. I just pass the pink. He'll not bother about missing the black. Sixty-nine frame. John Murphy. No. Sixty-nine was more than enough. It enables Sean Murphy to level the match at nine all. It's all on the deciding 19th frame. Here we go. The final frame. Hold your breath. Marco Foot to break. Anybody's match. But uh, I will mention that uh, Murphy has developed something of a habit, last season anyway, of losing in final frame deciders. He lost three six fives and a 10-9 to Stephen Maguire in the China Open. He could do with winning this one in a deciding frame finish. Yes, that'll be the last thing on his mind, Clive. I'm with John Parrott. You just want to have a chance in a deciding frame. As long as you get one chance, that's all you ask for. Mind you, I have known deciding frames where the players get four and five chances, and that's what it's all about, tension. It's absolutely gripping here, this final frame. Coming up to ten to midnight. <laughs> and the international centre is still full. Eight o'clock in the morning in China, where Fu has a huge fan base. The pictures are going live to China. Be a shot to nothing here. This red may cut. Well, he did try to put it in that One. pocket, but he didn't intend it to go in off a couple of reds. <coughs> Tried to pot that direct. And if he's got an angle on the brown. Go back up towards the reds, but they're not ideally placed. They're sitting very awkward at the moment. Pink tied up. Black not promisingly placed either. Oh, but he puts not the simple brown on the near jaw. Simple, of course, in any circumstances, but these. Silky smooth cue action 
holding up well there. A little cannon onto the two reds. There's a gap to screw on the two. He's played it well. <coughs> Five. Stick to your game, stick to your method. <coughs> Play the balls and not the significance of the occasion, if you can help it. <coughs> Sean Murphy proved when he won the world title that he's a player for the big occasion. This is what he feels he was born to do, Clive. Since he was a young boy, he's wanted to do this. And can he get his name on that trophy? Came all the way from the qualifying competition to win the world title in 2005. Oh. Got home in a tight finish, 18-16 against Matthew Stevens. Is he going to get home in this tight finish as well? This is totally different to the previous frame, the way the balls are situated here. It's far from easy. Now, I 13. can only assume he tried to catch the reds when he screwed back. He looks a bit confused there. I think he felt that he was going to just catch the two reds and to screw into that gap <laughs> was quite amazing. Now, he's left with a difficult brown. Green, Green ball. From slightly further away than Fu had the brown. <laughs> the cue ball did deviate from a straight line. In the last uh, four or five inches, but it, but it just reached. There may be an escape twice across the table to land on that red. That is a distinct possibility. He's looking at the ball cushion. That would be much more difficult. The shot is on, I want to put up. this with lots of side to land on the red that he's leaning over there he could push this into a potable position he's very close to the green as well there this is awkward Sean Murphy four. Sean will have this replaced because there's no pot for him to go at. Oh, 
that was a foul which the referee Jan Verhaas missed. The thinnest of feathers against the green. But anyway. The pot was left on. One. And uh, it's a chance for Murphy to build up a lead. Still not easy. It's got the pink. The reds are still slightly awkward. <coughs> I'm sure Fu wasn't aware that he fouled the green. It was the finest of contacts with the queue. And in any case, he left a ball on. <coughs> Bit too much screw on that. There's only Seven. one possible pot he can go for now, and he will take it on. That's the one he can take on, and he can get round the back of the reds there. John Murphy, seven. Overcut. <laughs> no shot can be taken for granted in the 19th frame of 19, with so much at stake. The UK Championship, second in importance, only to the World Championship. Quickly as you can, please. Um, someone forgot to switch their phone off. Unless they had their alarm set for midnight. It's just striking midnight at the moment. making a few mistakes in the last half hour. Uh, this is a similar brown to the one that he missed previously. Has he got an angle this time? It's the wrong side of the pocket. He'd have to force this in to come back out across the table. But he's going for it. got a similar shot now to the one that Sean played. He didn't risk Five. hitting it any harder than that. If he had to come across <coughs> past the blue, he had an easy red for the corner. This is not a gimme, and he will come around the back of those two reds if he pots it. Six. Now the chance is there. Is he going to risk the blue to hold the cue ball? He'd have to play a cannon onto red or pink. That's okay. Any cannon would do under those circumstances. He was going to leave a pot. 11. Full ball would have been better. No. <laughs> Mark of Fu, 11. That is pure tension. No kick 
I didn't think that was a heavy contact. <coughs> but he's left it awkward. It is amazing. I think my hands are perspiring holding the microphone. <coughs> Clive. Well, I'm feeling nervous for both players because uh, so evidently they're really going through it. This is not the sort of deciding frame where just one chance is needed. <coughs> well, to get to the potting angle of the red he's looking at, he would need a spider and an extension to reach over the other red. So that <coughs> is out of the question. You think you could play a safety shot off the one that's above the white, just glance off it. Uh, I can only assume that he's looking at the pot here. Uh, this is difficult, especially with the rest. Very well played. <laughs> Under the circumstances, that was a superb effort. He does like to attack them. What a shot that was. Four. He won the World Championship taking chances like that, Clive. He may win the UK, also taking chances. But a straightforward, straight red, involving not much distance, eludes him. Tension is still in command. It's amazing. The one he potted with the rest, and then have a look at that. One. But at least Sean knows that there's at least three awkward reds. Long way to go yet. What's the old phrase? Every pot a pint of blood. <coughs> Five. This is a tricky red into the middle he's looking at. A bit further up the table. That's what he was after. Marco Fu, eight. Scoring in penny numbers then. In this uh, ultra tense deciding frame.
Very good. Excellent. Perfect. You'll have to give this some thought. How does he get to land on the red that's near the black? Foo looking to see if it looks any easier from the other end, looking from uh, the red by the black to the cue ball. Yeah. Well, that's what he's looking at, the angle. But he's going to have to use the spider to get somewhere along that line to land on that particular red. Uh, this is so tough because you can put a bit of side on this. It's hard to judge the pace when you're using the spider. So easy to over hit it or under hit it. It's the black. Oh, and a miss. Sean Murphy, seven. Well, I hope it's not decided on a good few misses. <coughs> But he's got to try and land on that red. How's that, Marco? Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Foul and a miss. Sean Murphy, four. One miss, one miss cue, which is also a miss. Funny enough, that's exactly what happened to Sean Murphy earlier on when he took the little lump out of his cue. Third time lucky. He might get the other red this time. He's happy with that. Thin one off the left side of the red, down between the yellow and brown. He's going the other side to try and get behind the green. That'll bring the red into the middle of the table. As long as he's covered that red, he's OK. This looks like a roll up to the reds just. player's career is defined by what he's won. Murphy has already won a world title. If you could add the UK, he could be on the way to chalking up a string of world ranking titles. He's still only 26. So many problems to solve in this match. 
which has contained an enormous amount of tactical play. He's got to make sure he avoids the Bach colours from playing this shot. He's played it well. Where's it going to finish? <laughs> can pot it. Can't avoid the cannon on the blue, but he can cut this in the middle. Fu did attempt this red in such a way that he wasn't going to move any other red from a safe position. too far might still be able to take the yellow and get onto the two reds the right side of the table but it's awkward queuing <coughs> if the white pulls up a couple of inches short of that he can take yellow or brown and kill yeah. into the reds can't do it Sean Murphy one pushing the yellow safe as a little bit of insurance <laughs> leading as he is by 20 points. <coughs> this red will go close to the other corner pocket. <laughs> Sean sacrificed a good safety, pushing the yellow safe. He left a straightforward escape from Marco there. Not interested in the difficult red, the right side of the table. Oh. That's okay. Mark of Foo, four. Much better in the pocket than hitting the knuckle and coming back towards pink and red. only needs a good pot but he would need a favorable cannon on the pink I don't know if he can avoid the pink if he rolls it this is a chance I say it's a chance because he's knocked the pink towards the pocket if Sean can get a good angle on the pink he can develop the reds, and the one on the right side of the table is on. It's not a bad chance, this. All about the cannon now. He's got enough angle to screw over and disturb the black and reds. It's all about the pace and all about a little bit of good fortune to develop them. Well, it looked apparent to a gooseberry that he would develop both reds. Seven. But he's developed only one. by 23. He's played it well. Eight. 
If he can roll the pink in, drop on this red, he will need red and pink to leave Marco needing snookers. Fourteen. It's been a superb final. Not the highest quality, but the tension has been unbearable. Fifteen. So this pink is effectively a match ball, barring a snooker. perfect angle if he was behind to try and pot the pink and develop the red he just wants to pot the pink he won't be going anywhere near the red and black oh. he's fluked it can you believe it oh. what a cruel blow for Marco Fu to see that pink disappear in the middle pocket. 21. What a way to win the UK Championship. Well, it certainly looks as if he's going to win it now with Fu needing a snooker. Fight now, please. He's a very, very strong favourite. Yellow safe, green safe. Marco needs a snooker. Oh, where's the black going? Where's the black going? Oh. <laughs> Sean Murphy, 21. I don't believe that one. <laughs> Sean doesn't believe it. Right, settle down, please. Thank you. Well, what was he thinking of there? about Murphy's heart rate <laughs> after fluking what is likely to be championship bull. Well, the cost double was always on. It didn't matter particularly if it didn't go in. And the black was over the pocket. Well... <laughs> Unlucky, Marco Fu, but Eight. very well played, Sean Murphy. But it's a shame it was decided on a fluke, but that's snooker. Sean Murphy. And Eight. so Eight. The, map. the Maplin UK Championship comes to a close. Not the highest quality match we've ever seen in a UK final, but certainly one of the most engrossing. Murphy led 6-3. 8-6, fell behind at 9-8, but won the last two frames. It took him six hours, 25 minutes. He takes £100,000 as first prize. Fu takes 46000 as runner-up. But the only thing that matters is that Sean Murphy has beaten Marco Fu by nine frames to eight. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm sure we haven't seen a game like that for many years on the television screens. Can you put your hands together for two great gladiators at the Green Bays? Firstly, although I'm sure it'll be very difficult for him to talk after such a draining day, a few words from Marco. Thank you very much, Marco. <laughs> mm. 
Mark, I'm sure it's no consolation, but on behalf, I can hopefully speak for everybody, on behalf of everybody here at the Telford International Centre and everybody watching at home after 12 o'clock, thanks very much for playing your part in such a magnificent final. Thank you. Thanks very much. It's hard to know what to say, but just n you never gave up all day long. Yeah, it was, um, I, I never really settled today because um, like Sean was winning frames in one visit and I was winning frames on the pink, on the black. So it's tough to, to really hang in there because Sean is so confident amongst the balls and I, was, I wasn't really you know, um, like scoring enough. And I was like, really surprised to, to win nine frames today because I wasn't playing really well. But then you got your chance after it looked like Sean had all the weight of the world on his shoulders. Then you got in front and all of a sudden it seemed like it transferred to you. Yes, uh, I mean, it's just the, the matter of playing well under pressure. I think Sean has, uh, has done that quite well today. I haven't really just lived up to the standard under pressure today. That's why Sean is the winner. Well, you cemented your place in the, in the top eight for this season, it looks like. So congratulations and, and a, a successful Thank tournament you. even so. Thanks, Steve. Thanks. <laughs> Joel Murphy, what's it like to get back to winning ways? It's been a while. <laughs> I tell you, I've never, I don't think I've ever felt pressure like that ever before. And, you know, even when I won the world title in 05, that was even harder than that because it's been a long time for me since I even competed for a tournament. So, you know, to win one of the majors again is, is massive. And all of a sudden you've joined a fairly exclusive club, I'm not boasting as well here, but you're the 10th player to win the world championship and the UK championship. Yeah, I mean, this, you know, this tournament's got a massive prodigious you know, status in the game. It, it, it's it's a, a great tournament to win. There are some fantastic names on it, yourself included. And uh, <laughs> it's nice to be in the same club as you. A tough day unfolded, but it's been a tough season up until now. Yeah, I think, you know, there aren't any other matches to show, so unfortunately that will be on the highlights. <laughs> but it shouldn't really. I mean, that's probably... Probably the worst game we've played, you know, throughout the whole tournament and it had to be in the final. But, you know, that just shows that all the hours of practice, they do count for something. But we were both banged under it and it showed, I think. But it made for a fantastic final. At the start of the week, if somebody had said to you, you were going to get to the final, you'd probably have bitten the hand off. No, absolutely. I'd have taken it, you know, day one. If someone had said you're going to get the chance to win the tournament, then I would have, I would have taken it. Because coming here, you know, I've had no form all season at all. Um, I don't think anyone tipped me except Willie Thorne day one. <laughs> Congratulations, Willie, as well. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for two great players. Thank you. Congratulations, Sean. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your presentation party. Sir Rodney Walker, Chairman of the WPBSA and World Snooker, and from Applin Electronics, Marketing Director David O'Reilly and Benedict Lindley. The runner-up, receiving the silver medal, Marco Fu. the winner, receiving the gold medal, the trophy and the title, Maplin UK Champion 2008, it is Sean Murphy! <laughs> Murphy. 
Well, he had not won a match all season before turning up here in Telford. Now he is the United Kingdom champion here. And as you so rightly pointed out, Steve, he's joined a very exclusive club with Mr. Parrott, Mr. Davis, and eight others in it. And I wonder, because he's now achieved what is the ultimate for snooker players in winning both the UK and the World Championship, how should we now regard Sean Murphy? Well, I think you've got to you know, take the first tournament you win as a major and say, well, that's fantastic, world championship. But unless you win another one, you could always argue you know, there's a possibility that it was just a one-hit wonder. And, and cementing his place now with the UK championship proves that, I think. It does indeed. And in terms of what Michael Fu has achieved, up to number six in the provisional rankings, he fought and fought and fought all day today, John. How much credit does he deserve for his performance throughout the entire week? Well, an enormous amount of it. Through the week, he played fantastic today as I say second or third gear but he just wouldn't give in he just kept going and going and going and he fully deserves his lofty ranking position and he's a great competitor I'm sure everybody in Hong Kong disappointed about the way it's panned out for him but it, when you look back on that final frame you said to me when we were watching it I haven't seen a final frame decide like that for years and years quite amazing I think Sean Murphy summed it up He'd never felt pressure like that in his life before on a snooker table, even in the World Championship. And I just think that shows you how exciting and how much tension can be in a frame of snooker. Uh, from that reason, uh, just superb viewing. And effectively to win it with a fluke pink, amazing. Well, uh, incredible. But I loved it, you know. I thought it was an, it's a different type of final. You know, in a day and age when we see automatons turn up yeah. and make 100, 100, 100, it's wonderful to see tension at the end. Balls missed, excitement. Well, he died a thousand deaths there. He's missed the pink, he's not even hit the jaws with this one, and it's flown straight in the middle pocket. Yeah, oh, what a way he to couldn't win. believe his luck, could he really? <laughs> but when we look back on the week as a whole, it's been clouded in some respects by controversy off the table and indeed on it. But how should we look back at the UK Championship 2008, Steve? Well, I think one match was clouded with a, with a bit of that, but uh, overall, the general feeling for me was there's been so many great matches, uh, and that for me st stands out much more. Obviously, one gets more attention, but so many good players, and you just didn't know who was going to end up winning this tournament. How will you reflect on it, John? I just think it's now incredibly difficult, more than it's ever been, to win any event, and we've seen this week with so many 9-7s and 9-8s. Believe you me, a little bit of luck there, a fluke pink as we've seen. It's, a, it's the difference between winning and losing now because the players are so evenly matched. I tell you what, it's getting like Groundhog Day in the snooker. This reminds me of several Crucible Championships into the wee hours, doesn't it? <laughs> However, it's Christmas week. We do hope that you've managed to stay up with us and enjoy this final tonight. It's been absolutely fascinating, I must say. And you're not going to have too long to wait before our next snooker instalment because just after you've taken your Christmas decorations down, we'll be back on Sunday the 11th of January because it is the Masters. It's the premier invitational event at the Wembley Arena. Mark Selby, the jester from Leicester, will be defending the title he won at the start of the year, and that will kick us off in 2009. But it is Sean Murphy who has rounded off 2008 in some style. Thank you very much, Stephen John, for your company this week. What would you like for Christmas? Just your company. Thanks, that's very kind. I think, for me, it's got to be an early night, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Do you get one, you get one of them? <laughs> but at the same time, we hope you have a wonderful festive season. Enjoy Christmas, enjoy New Year, and we'll see you at the Masters. In the meantime, from us all here in Telford, bye for now.